the head coach of the Tar Heels at 70 years of age from Cookville, Tennessee. Now at Carolina in his second stint, 18 and 13. 87 wins at Carolina, 262 in his career, and that's second most among active Division I coaches, trailing only Nick Saban. And away we go from Chapel Hill. There'll be no return by Emory Simmons. And here comes the junior from Indian Trail, North Carolina, and the preseason player of the year in the ACC, and that's Sam Howell, Roddy. Yeah, and I think Sam Howell over the course of this season uh, he obviously has not had the type of year that he did a year ago. Some of that, I think, has to do with the fact that he's, he's trying to compensate for a lot of what the, around him is missing. The one thing he has done extremely well this year and, and much better than a year ago is run the football. He's been a big-time threat on the ground. Tennessee transfer Ty Chandler with him in the backfield. Garrett Walston, the tight end. Three receivers for Howell, and that's the explosive downs in motion. Chandler off the right side, and Ty Chandler almost five on first down before Tyreek Stevenson the stop, Alex. So second down and five. After the run by Chandler starts the ball game. Howell to throw for the first time. Downs the catch and hit right away. Shy of the first down. Big lick by Takori Couch. Alex, let's check with you. What do you need me to hold? So it'll be third and short after a run by Chandler and a throw to Downs. And the first third down as the sun starts to peek in from behind the rain clouds. Uh-oh. Miami with pressure. Give to Chandler. He will fall across the 35. Kane's decided to tighten it up in the front there, Roddy. Yeah, they certainly did. Expecting run on third and short. A lot of guys around the line of scrimmage, but North Carolina, that offensive line, able to create just enough of a crease for Ty Chandler to get the first down. And Sam Howell checks it to the near side, and that's Bill Longo, the offensive coordinator, signaling in the plays. That's Kamari Morales, the tight end in motion. First and 10, quick throw on the slant, batted in the air, looking for Justin Olsen and Takori Couch. Stuck a hand in to create the deflection. It's a great break by Takori Couch. He almost had the interception there. But on the other side, you're seeing Justin Olsen getting the start at that left receiver. Yeah, Takori Couch very well could have had an interception. It's probably a pretty good defensive play by Justin Olsen. So second down, snap to Howell on the perimeter. Here's Downs with blockers. Josh Downs across the 40, and they'll spot it at the 42. Tackle made by Mari Carter, the senior from Riviera Beach, making his 21st career start today for Manny Diaz's club. Well, look, you, you look at Josh Downs, and he is a guy that's going to touch the ball today. A guy that 49 catches already through the season through these six games, the ball's going to find 11, and that's going to be the big test for Miami, tackling an open space against Josh Downs. So now third down for Carolina, forward to the first. Opening possession of the ball game. Howell from the pocket, flushed out, can run and will. First down and a slide, shy of midfield for Sam Howell. He's Carolina's second leading rusher, but he trails Todd Chandler by less than 100 yards on the season. Well, the thing that he does so well this year in particular is when he moves up in the pocket and can take off straight ahead, he is incredibly dangerous. Not only that, when he gets in the open field, hard to tackle. He's sort of a big-bodied guy, not, not super uh, large, but thick when he gets out in the open field with a little bit of speed. First down and 10. Here's the give, and Chandler picks, bobs, weaves, open field, Ty Chandler, inside the 15, touchdown, Carolina. Uh, Wes, Miami fans may be having PTSD from what happened last year. Ty Chandler gets the handoff, 
a missed tackle by two Miami defenders, and it looks a lot like what those running backs from North Carolina did a year ago. Javante Williams and Michael Carter had a field day in this game. Point after is good by Atkins. Seven plays, 75 yards, 303. Time of the drive. Ty Chandler has his. Here we go. Miller in motion. What, wait, is that a baby on the field? It looks ill offense, and now it's Tyler Van Dyke's turn. And there'll be no return by Miami, so first and 10 for Van Dyke and the Canes. Off their 25, but Roddy back to the run here by Chandler. Yeah, when you, when you see this run, you're going to see the safety down to the bottom of your screen in the corner. Bubba Bolden into Corey Couch. Both have a shot at Ty Chandler in the hole. He slips inside of both of those guys. And then just outruns the backside safety to the end zone. Has a shot, swipes at legs, can't make the tackle. It's a great run by Ty Chandler. Great job having something for the unblocked defender. But if you're Miami, you got two guys there to make a shot. That, that tackle has to be made. Couldn't have asked for a better start, Alex, by Ty Chandler. Yeah, but well, when I had a chance to catch up with Ty Chandler, he said he saw what the running backs did last year, and that was a big reason why he wanted to come here. There's a throw off line on the first snap for Keyshawn Smith off the hand of Tyler Van Dyke. Yeah, I can see where Javante Williams and Michael Carter would inspire people to yeah, come kidding. to Chapel Hill and run the rock. Well, not only that, everywhere Phil Longo's been, they've been able to run the football. But uh, Miami on the first play with a little bit of a little bit of trickery, a flea flicker. Tyler Van Dyke just missed the throw. Pistol set for Van Dyke. Harris left side, not a lot there. Carolina rallying to the ball. Miles Murphy, the stop. Now remember, Ronnie told you about this matchup. That we're presented here today with Ray Vahasik, 51 to nose tackle for Carolina, and Ja'Kai Clark, the center, making his first start on the road. There's Big Vahasik out of McHenry, Illinois. Fun to visit with yesterday, by the way. And then Clark, there's the pivot. Young man from Grayson High School in Loganville, Georgia. Third and full nine. Van Dyke cuts it loose, incomplete. Thrown slightly behind the intended receiver, Keyshawn Smith, and Miami's done in three snaps on their opening drive. Yeah, they, they tried the, the trick play to start. You don't get much off the run on second down, and then on that one, again, I think Tyler Van Dyke just missed the throw. Not sure if it got tipped or something. It came out of his hand just flat, underthrows it, and Miami has to punt. Fourth best punt returner in the ACC, 10th nationally is Josh Downs. They have to start asking the question what he doesn't do. Here is Lou Headley, the Aussie. Serious candidate for the Ray Guy Award, by the way. Second in the ACC, 19th nationally. He is fourth in the country in net. And we got a penalty as Headley drills it. I think delay on Miami. Canes were moving people around here. I'm not sure why you take the time out there, honestly, Wes. I'm not either. We'll take the break with them, though. 7-0 Carolina early in Chapel Hill. Seven-nothing North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Almost four minutes gone first period with Alex Chapel, Roddy Jones, Wes Durham. Game one of our ACC Network doubleheader. Drive a moment ago for Carolina. Pretty simplistic, Roddy. Yeah, think it was. About it? it started with the run. With Ty Chandler, ironically ended that way too. But Sam Howell gets going, running the football as well. Something that he's done really well this year. Ty Chandler makes a couple guys miss, goes 51 yards to the end zone, and that's what this North Carolina offense wants to be at its best. Drive recap presented by Marathon. So the Miami timeout after the Canes go three and out. Howell will wait. As here is Lou Headley to punt it again. Tar Heels came within a whisker and forced. Maybe one off the side of the foot. By Headley standards, not a great punt, but it's still into Tar Heel territory around the 40-yard line. Wes, we've seen a possession for each team, and already the, the excitement, the energy seems to be on the North Carolina side, and maybe that's because of the way the first two possessions have gone, but this Miami defense 
you need a stop on this one. I'm not saying like the game's on the line or in the balance, but just from a confidence standpoint, the way this game went last year, yeah. the loss that they took 16 days ago to Virginia, getting a stop here would help them a lot. Chandler the back in motion. Carolina sends Antoine Green. It's intercepted. There's the play. Jafari Harvey, touchdown Miami. You said they needed a stop, Roddy. <laughs> that's that's the enhanced stop right there. Not only do you get the stop, but you put the ball in the end zone. It's like offense, you guys take a break. What a play by Jafari Harvey. That is, I mean, this is as good of a play as a, of a defensive end as you'll see. Bats the ball in the air and is able to pick it off. You could tell from the way he came off. He read Sam Howell's eyes. It's just an easy bubble that Sam Howell's trying to throw, but Jafari Harvey picks it off and takes it for a touchdown. By the way, Wes, by the way, this is a turnover chain and touchdown rank celebration right here. You get both of them, you go pick six. Wow. Extra point by Borealic. Borealis is good. Another look at the interception, the sixth of the year for Sam Howell. Just look at how athletic. 12 on the left side of your screen, defeats the cut, hits the ball up in the air, picks it off, and takes it for six. The key on that play is getting the cut. You try and get the, the defensive ends hands down. Harvey, though, able to bounce up and then catch the football and take it for six. What a turn of events for Miami. Mm. An excellent play on the defensive side of the football. What them touchdown rings? Yeah, take the touchdown rings too. Get the touchdown rings to put the touchdown rings on. All the accessories. <laughs> <laughs> well, 7-7 seven, seven our score, and now the food lion food for thought, maybe. Keys to the game, Roddy. Huh? Oh man. Well, look, Miami needs to create explosive plays and turnovers, and they did that right there. And the second thing, tackle the football, which they didn't do on the previous drive. And then look, when, when when North Carolina, it's gonna come down to line play on both sides. The play on the line of the offensive and defensive line are going to be huge. And then defensively for North Carolina, they gotta talk. The communication on the back end has let them down time and time again. They've had a busted coverage in basically every game the last three times they've taken the field. So they've got to communicate on defense and make sure they don't bust those coverages. And after a 10-0 lead last week and a 10-point loss, they had a 7-0 lead, a three and out, thought they were getting the ball back. They did, and on the first play, Miami ties it on the pick six. And now we go back even again. No return of the kick. Tar Heels will go from the 25 with their third possession. So that was a defensive end. Does that count as a big man touchdown? I mean, he's not that big, but he's a defensive lineman. I think I'm going to call that a big man touchdown. You know what? I think that's really more for Matt Klain and EJ and Jordan to Yeah, they're going to have to weigh in. Maybe, maybe after have. dark they'll weigh in. But yeah. I, I'm going to I'm going to say 252 pounds is what Harvey's listed as. I'm going to say that's a big I'm man. I'm going to say that's a Matt Klain discussion. It's yeah. his vote. He's singular on that, wouldn't you? Okay. No, uh, it's it's got to be a group decision. Collective effort. My vote's right. in there. Here's Howell from the gun. Let's see how the quarterback of the Tar Heels responds. On the corner, Chandler. Nicely done for nine yards on first down by Ty Chandler running behind Jordan Tucker. And again, two broken tackles on that play. Misses one in the backfield. Makes a corner miss to get a couple extra yards up the sideline. Miss tackles. Miami statistically is the worst tackling team in the country. And it is shown early on. Second down and one. Clap of the hands. Here's Howell. Tries to keep it right side. He will pick up the first down. Alex, the, the focus and the intensity of that focus on Sam Howell. Man, you got to be strong emotionally and mentally to fight through what he's going through, I think. Yeah, no doubt about that. When I was talking with Sam Howell about facing adversity, not just with this team, but for him personally, and he said it's early in the season, early in his career, he struggled with it. So he tries not to get too caught up in the highs and lows because it keeps you from staying locked in. Here's a quick throw on the perimeter. Chandler has been a major piece of this early, and that's another First down out to the 47 yard line before Steed made the tackle after a throw of 10 yards. That's the play that they were trying to go to on the pick six. Just trying to get Ty Chandler out in space with a couple blockers out front. You can see North Carolina is going to test Miami's ability to tackle in space with Ty Chandler, with Josh Downs, and with Sam Howell over and over and over. We'll see if this Hurricanes defense can do it. 
Quick throw. Downs. Made one miss and will fight inside the 45 toward another first down before Williams finally falls on top of him. And it's going to be just shy of the first. Josh Downs and Jordan Addison, who's also playing this afternoon of Pittsburgh. Those two guys, Roddy, are starting to separate themselves in the ACC. Dontavious Wick certainly on the list, too, at Virginia. Yeah, well, Josh Downs has been fantastic, and every time he catches the football, Miami fans should hold their breath because of his ability to make you miss the short area quickness and then the long speed that he has. Every time he touches the ball, it is get your popcorn ready. DJ Jones, sophomore in, running back to spell Chandler, and Miami rallies to the football nicely that time. DeAndre Johnson, the transfer and defensive end from Tennessee, was the first guy to get to DJ Jones. There is Downs. I don't know what stat I like better. The at least eight catches in every game or at least one touchdown in every game? Uh, I think it has to be the touchdowns, right? I mean, he, you're performing like that. It's it's uh, it, He has been incredible. And he's done it in different ways. He's done it deep passes, the diving catch against Virginia. He's caught passes in the flat and taking it for touchdowns. Howell on third and two. Carolina to throw. Slam route. You know who. Breaking free. Josh Downs. Touchdown, Carolina. Was that to get your popcorn ready? Is that what you were talking about? Absolutely. And look, the, the, his ability to change speeds is what makes him special. It, it change of direction, change of speed. It's a little wide receiver angle route. Once he catches it and has a seam, it's game over. 45 yards, Roddy. Just, just watch this route. Coming off the line of scrimmage, Pauses a little bit, comes back in, catches the football, splits the defense, and ends up in the end zone. Just for the year. And Downs already putting an afternoon together, and so is Sam Howell, who's now thrown another touchdown in his 32nd career game. There will be no return by Miami. Canes will schedule, uh, scrimmage it on schedule from the 25, Roddy, back to the touchdown catch. Yeah, you're going to see a bunch concept to the top. And watch Downs. He's on the inside. He's just going to hesitate a little step out, gets the defender to step outside, and then it's just not even fair. Once he gets the ball in his hands, running away from that Miami secondary, let's take another look at it from the other side and watch Sam Howell's delivery. He's got a clean pocket to throw from, which is all he needs. Both of these guys, just a little bit of space. Gervin Hall drew the drew the assignment of covering downs on that one and look uh, you got to bracket him you got to have a safety over the top somebody underneath because number 11 is going to be able to win all day on those so howl to downs 14 7 carolina back in front cameron harris gets the start on the drive and runs up into taman fox's tackle say what fox makes his 42nd start today for mac brown Brad student from Lawrenceville, Georgia, who in his last two games has had seven tackles, a sack, and a tackle for loss and a half on that. Meanwhile, Tyler Van Dyke's got to sort it out here. Gives to Harris. Big collision in the backfield. Flag goes down as Harris is able to grind out to the 28 before Giovanni Biggers is involved. Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Defense, number eight. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Miles Murphy gives Miami a fresh set of downs. Yeah, My Miles Murphy's the one that almost blew this play up in the backfield. Looks like he took DJ Scaife for a ride there, but ends up he had his hands in the face of Scaife as he pushed him back into the mesh. And they're bringing the monitor out. The previous play is under further review. Okay, Roddy. Huh. So, Dwayne Haight is the referee. And he is over with Peter Voss. Now on the headset. Trying to figure out what this is for. I mean, there is a little bit of a dip of the head at the end by Giovanni Biggers. So maybe they're looking at targeting and, 
and the the fact that that uh, Miami was going so fast that the replay official likely wanted to stop this. Looks this like one's it. gonna be an interesting one. So so the, the question with targeting, obviously you have the two different types. Is he a defenseless player? The answer to that is no when you're a runner. Right. So it has to be an attack with the crown of the helmet and then an indicator. And it doesn't matter where he gets hit. It does not matter where the runner gets hit. If you attack with the crown of the helmet, that is targeting. And I think they may get Biggers here. He yeah. lowers the helmet. Now there isn't the launch. So the question is, does it clear for an indicator? But he clearly lowers his head and strikes with the crown of his helmet. And this is the part of targeting that's there to, to protect the defender from himself, to keep your head up, see what you hit. Okay. Because you lower your head like that, and it is a safety issue. Because you know the person at home is saying, wait a second, he doesn't hit the other guy's helmet, he hits his shoulder. Right, and it's about protecting both sides. This one is about protecting the defender from himself. And so, I, you know, I think this is 50-50, but based on whether or not they feel like there's an indicator there, right. but I can see it both ways. I can see them saying that, that hey, there there is the indicator because of the lowering of the head, clearly strikes with the crown of the helmet. If you were to pin my feet down, I would say this probably goes the way of targeting, but right. and that's like 51-49 for me. So Dwayne Haight will tell us about it. After further review, there is no foul for targeting by number 27. He may remain in the game. First down. All right. There you go. So, so I like I like that call because what Giovanni Biggers did is a part of football. Now you again want to protect him from himself, sure. But because he hits the shoulder, I'm guessing there's no indicator involved in that. There's okay. no launch. There's no attack, and so he gets to remain in the game. That's how it should work, you know. Yeah. Ball at the 43. Remember the penalty on uh, Murphy set up that play. Here's the throw on the perimeter. Miami making the move, and this is Keyshawn Smith who's been active early. You know, they've kind of been waiting on Smith, the young freshman from San Diego, a COVID freshman, I should say. A year ago, played in eight games, had a couple of catches. That's a 13-yard play for the Canes. He had 13 catches coming into today. Here's a toss. Harris trying to get to the perimeter and take it out of the air by Trey Morrison. I like the hurdle more than I do the hit. I mean, as a, as a, as a running back, you know, oh, yeah. you know you're going to take the hit, but watch the hurdle. Here's the athletic the, play. As a running back, he goes yeah. up over the top. And he knows he's going to take the hit. That's fine. You take hits every play. It's exciting for Trey Morrison because you hit a guy out of the air, but look, man, he still hurdled it, man. Second down. They got a free play. Sure do. Flags down, Van Dyke got to sail it out of bounds. And a pass in the field. Flags yeah. on the field. Van Dyke was thinking about the backyard in Connecticut on that rollout. Ooh, that's, that's what your coach to do. The line doesn't move, you roll out, throw the ball down the field. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Offside, defense, number eight. That penalty is declined. Holding, defense, number 20. 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. It's on the sophomore Tony Grimes. That was here on the boundary side. So that'll move him into the Carolina 33 and a first down. Van Dyke, play fake to Harris. Plenty of time now going to cut it loose and throw it out of the back of the end zone. It looked like Smith was the intended receiver and a flag has come down again. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense, number 25, 15-yard penalty, first down. Mac Brown is not happy at all with any of this. It's on Cayman Rucker. Let's take a look at it. So Van Dyke play action he has all the time in the world that's not that's not roughing the passer no it's not roughing the passer at all he didn't he doesn't go high he doesn't hit him Tyler Van, I mean he's trying to slow up what's right. he supposed to do like dive and roll out of the way I mean, come on first and 10 to the 18 that's Mallory the tight end in motion quick hitter try to get it to Harris Tar Heels rally Jeremiah Gimmel the veteran linebacker 
makes the stop. Three huge penalties on this drive for Miami, uh, benefiting Miami, has kept this drive going. The hands to the face, which was a good call. The holding, good call. That roughing the passer, that's a brutal call. Mac Brown should be upset about that. But the penalties are really what's kept this Miami drive going. I can't remember more than a, a handful of positive plays for Miami on this drive. Knighton has come in, the rooster. Jalen Knighton for the first time. He'll try and get to the edge. And he'll be stopped back near the 18-yard line. Tamari Fox and Roddy's guy, Ray Bahasek. He sets up a third and long. Miami in a situation where they have to respond. This Miami defense has struggled stopping North Carolina on offense. Tell you what, when they've gotten down in this area, the corner route to the slot has been a big play that he's felt comfortable with. But it looks like you're going to get one on one to the bottom. North Carolina showing pressure. Five minutes and change now to play in this first quarter. Van Dyke, pressure coming, he'll be sacked. Put another one down for Tamon Fox. Carolina has struggled at times getting pressure on the quarterback, but Tamon Fox just comes scot free. I mean, Miami slides the protection and either puts a run, there's either a bust on the left guard or you're putting a running back on a defensive lineman. Either way, it's bad ball. And Tyler Van Dyke is worse for the wear because of it. 44 yard try for Borgales. Longest of the year, 55. He missed from 33 to end the Virginia game. Kick away, and it is good. So Andres Borgales bangs it home to make it 14-10 with four minutes to go in this first quarter of play. And Manny Diaz excited about where his team is. Jay Bateman is kind of self-inflicted to set up the drive, Roddy. Yes. Those penalties. So let's let's go back to the sack. Because on this on the left side, you've got the entire offensive line sliding to the right. And then uh, what I think typically happens there is the tackle slides as well. And it's the tackle that ends up on the guy coming straight up the middle and the running back goes out to block the defensive end. Putting a running back on a defensive lineman that's lined up in that position is just a really hard block and a big ask, especially when you've got Jalen Knighton in the backfield. So uh, again, like we're not in the huddle. We don't see what's going or we don't hear what's going on from an overall standpoint in terms of the play call, but it's a tough assignment if that's the call for Jalen Knight. Right. So Miami, who would have preferred a touchdown, settles for the field goal because Carolina's had it three times and twice they've exploded to the end zone. One on a Chandler run, another on a touchdown pass from Howell to Downs. There'll be no return here by Conley. And the Tar Heels will scrimmage off their 25-yard line. Just getting started on ACC Network tonight. Good crowd expected at Alumni Stadium, Chestnut Hill. A little fall crisp in the air, Roddy. Love Number that. 22, Love NC that. State and Boston College. A win by the Wolfpack would make them 5-1 and one for the second time. The other time being 2018. Boston College has lost 21 straight to Associated Press ranked teams. Ooh. Can, do you remember their last win? Say the red bandana game against what? USC or Florida Southern State? California. USC, you yeah. are exactly right. DJ Jones, the running back for Howell. Quick throw downs on the perimeter. Trying to shake, spin, and a really good play in the Miami secondary by James Williams. James Williams is a true freshman who has uh, is, is dropping more talent on the ground as he walks. Than, than most guys in this league will ever have. That's a great tackle in the open field. Got to see him on the field pregame, and he is, he's massive, Wes. He looks oh. like an outside linebacker. Look like he could have touched the, the, the hash to the sideline with those arms, too. He was number 32 in the ESPN 300, and Howell airmails one over Downs that time. It was closer to Kareem Kitchens, 
Another young guy in that Miami secondary. That's going to be a theme. We're going to see a lot of young guys as North Carolina is deciding to go tempo. This is a huge stop for Miami. If you're looking for Josh Downs, he's second from the bottom. See number 11 looking towards the sideline. That's Garrett Walsh in the tight end in the slot to the top. Miami's running. Gervin Hall back over to Downs at the bottom. Looks like they're going to go man to man to get the matchup that they want. 10 on the play clock for Howell. Cuts it loose and off the hands of the intended receiver, DJ Jones. Oh, and Jones catches it, Roddy. Uh, he may hit him. He may hit his head on the goalpost, Wes. I mean, full head of steam. There is nobody there. Bubba Bolden is the only one that has a shot, and he's moving the opposite direction of where, of where DJ Jones would have been running. That ball just a little too hot. Sam Howell, not his best possession. A couple of errant throws on that one, and a good stop for Miami on defense. Here is the freshman Jacoby George waiting to take the punt from Ben Kiernan. The young man from Dublin, Ireland. Kiernan, by the way, 44-yard average. He hangs this one high along the hash mark. George wants to play off the 25, steps through two, three, and knocked out of bounds at the 37-yard line. So, 49-yard punt, 12-yard return. And Miami going to get a crack of it now with Van Dyke here. Well, a moment ago earlier in this first quarter, the University of North Carolina honored one of their longtime staffers, the director of Keenan Stadium, James Sperling. And every program, Roddy, has a James Sperling, right? I mean, it's amazing. This guy's been a fixture in Chapel Hill for better than 50 years and in association with the university. And earlier this week, director of athletics, Bubba Cunningham, and the athletics board decided to name the West Concourse here at Keenan Stadium after James Sperling. And our congratulations to James Sperling. What an honor. Yep. Throw on the perimeter. Keyshawn Smith pulled down in space by Conley. I tell you what, you, you flip on the film and you watch teams throw smoke screens or bubble screens, you throw them to number zero side, and they're not going very far. Right. He has been all over. It plays those as well as anybody in the conference at the point of attack, and you saw it there. Yep. Jalen Knight back in the ball game for second and 11. Carolina by four, Van Dyke, quick throw, boundary side. Harley stepping out of bounds. With Mike Harley's 148th career catch. He has been in Miami a while. Certainly has. He's a guy that's really grown over his career. And this is a, a big third down for Miami. All of them are big when you're up against an offense like Carolina. But they go empty. They're trying to give Tyler Van Dyke a little bit better read. They outnumber Carolina down to the bottom of your screen with four players down. Carolina's only got three. Jeremiah Gimmel coming out now. Here's a throw and offline for Smith. So the Canes will have to punt. Only 12 yards of offense for Miami. 151 for Carolina. And, and I, I don't I don't love that call on fourth down. You're going one on one to the boundary with your freshman receiver. I know he's talented, but getting off press coverage for a young player and making that play, it's a tough play to make. I'd love to see them gone down to the bottom of the screen where they had more players in Miami. There's the punt from Headley, and it's a good one. Downfield, but it drifted on the far sideline. We'll see where they spot it. 19 yard line. So Lou Headley bangs one inside the 20 and Tar Heels take over with under two minutes to go. You know this offensive start for Miami has felt a lot like their last game against Virginia and in that game the defense really kept him in there until the offense got going. It's a much tougher task against this North Carolina offense when they're playing well. I mean Virginia can put up points and, and scores. They did a decent job of keeping them in the game. It's going to be imperative today too it looks like Chandler back in the ball game is the running back with Howell that's Walston the tight end in motion procedure on Carolina it looks as if Keyron Johnson the center might have flinched ball here start. offense 
Offensive line except the center. Five yard penalty. First down. <laughs> I think Keyron Johnson forgot the snap count. <laughs> Everybody but you, big fella. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody except Keyron. Moved. But really it was on Keyron because he didn't snap it. <laughs> yeah. It's been interesting with all the talk about Emory Simmons, Choffrey Brown coming into the year. Justin Olsen has gotten the majority of the snaps opposite Antoine Green. Here is Sam Howell trying to break free again. A flag is thrown and Williams slings him to the deck. At the 21. Let's see here. James Williams is a beast. <laughs> Personal foul. Illegal hands to the face. Defense. Number 17, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Wayman Steed, the will linebacker. You're going to see 17 coming right up the middle as he's trying to get off. Oh, yeah, the yeah. hands to the face there. But Sam, you got to slide, Sam Howell. Get down, man. I mean, this is a guy that's very important to this team. Right now, slide, but instead, it's James Williams who ropes him around the, around the shoulders. We'll call it the shoulders and throws him down. Right. Got a slide. You got a slide. Same slide. <laughs> Howell, the downs again on the perimeter. Oh, nice open field tackle again. Cameron Kitchens has played that well a couple times already in this first half. Yeah, the, the freshmen have played the best in the secondary for Miami so far. James Williams been all over the place. Cameron Kitchens, and that's why you see them standing next to each other in the secondary. There's been a Oh, there was a lot of talk by Manny Diaz about playing some of these younger guys. You see just closing the gap, throwing down downs. Playing the younger guys because they are more talented. They may make some mistakes, but you've seen the talent. Second down nine. Howell, flush from the pocket to his right. Makes a move and will get the first down. There's your slide right. Foremost, the line been the, the line up front does a decent job of handling the stunt, but he sees the open field and he gets positive gain. It's an excellent job by Sam Howell. Miami again trying to pressure Carolina. Chandler fighting through on the run will pick up nine. Eight for sure to the Miami 46 yard line. You know, he had a tough job playing, tough time, sorry Wes, had a tough time playing that concept a year ago. Manny Diaz told us, look, we didn't play counter well last year, and they were a great counter team. We didn't play outside zone well, they were a great outside zone team. Well, that was counter, and there was a ton of space in front of Todd Chandler. This is the final play of the period, Roddy. Interesting 15 That's minutes it. to start here in Chapel quarter. Hill, huh? Very fascinating. It's been a little sloppy, a little explosive. Seen some mistakes. Uh, that's kind of what we expected. Yep. The rain stopped about 15 minutes before kickoff. Carolina's rained a big play. Jafari Harvey's had one for Miami. Second quarter is next. Presented by Subway. This is ACC football. Tar Heels with a four-point lead on Miami. <laughs> we got a procedure call to start the quarter. I believe. Let's see. Phil Longo has already come off the Tar Heel bench with wide receivers coach Lonnie Galloway. Because I think Longo, Carolina was ready to snap it, and then something happened. Look at Miami making a change here. There is no foul on the play for illegal motion. Second down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phil Longo, let's roll. Let's roll. Yeah, we were trying to roll, and they dropped a flag. Right. I mean, it slows down <laughs> the operation. Yeah. Same motion. Play fake Howell, pressure coming, in trouble, evades the rush, gets a block, first down. To the 34 goes Sam Howell. That play is completely made by Sam Howell. He had Antoine Green down the field if he had had time to throw it. But the pressure gets to him quickly and he's got to run. And what a, what a fantastic run by Sam Howell. I mean, his ability to escape and get out. After the play fake, the pressure's all over him. Jared Hunt, Harrison Hunt gets to him, and then once he gets in the open field, shows how dangerous he's become. And Keontre Smith, the hit at the 34. Todd Chandler 
And he'll run to James Williams for a gain of four. Second down and six coming up. The second quarter, well, it's not been Carolina's best, Roddy. Outscored 69 to 30 in quarter two this year. Wow. And look, that, that's, that's sort of the, the fast start part of it, maintaining those fast starts. And that, a lot of that's going to be keeping this defensive line off of Sam Howell. Yep. That's downs in motion. Chandler tried to slide to the perimeter. Boy, Miami handled that well. Smith, a big play to limit Ty Chandler. Third down is next. North Carolina has been a really good third to medium team, converting over 70% of their third and, and four to six during the, during the year. This is a place where they love to go to Josh Downs. Carolina's already got 116 yards of rushing. <laughs> 51 on one pop will help That's with true. That. Yep, you're right. Third down here in five. Josh Downs in the back of the stack to the bottom. Here's Howell. Downs on the slam. First down to the 20. Tackled by Kitchens, who's shaken up on the play. Roddy, 11 makes it look really, really timeout. easy. Timeout for injury. Timeout. We'll take a break as they tend to Kitchens, who is shaken up, making the tackle of Downs. First and 10. A conversion. Look to the bottom of your screen. Josh Downs just eases off the line of scrimmage. And then when he knows and feels Sam Howell's ready to throw the ball, makes the break, it's pitch and catch. It's easy first down for North Carolina. Tar Heels set up at the 20. Leading by four early period two at Keenan Stadium. And DJ Jones can't get started on the run. Well done by Wayman Steed, the linebacker, to get his arms around Jones for just a yard. Roddy, how much of that do you think in Phil Longo's book is to set up something else? The layer, kind of that delay run. You know, you come back and then you'll go wider in some cases, right? Yeah, a, a lot of a lot of what they do uh, sort of gives you the option to go in, go out, and it sets up other stuff. Here's Howell. He's keeping it this time inside the 15. Kept his feet inside the 10. Rolls to a first and goal at the Miami 6. Garrett Walston helping out the tight end for his quarterback in the run game. Yeah, and I, and I think I think Sam Howell expected them to tackle him. It didn't expect to get through that. But watch this. You get counter action to one side. He pulls it so that Miami can't play it on the back side. And then just guys trying to knock Sam Howell over. Doesn't secure it. He, he could have scored had he had kind of expected to come through it. Yeah. It was absorbing the hit. Corey Flagg banged into it, but didn't knock him over. Here's Chandler on the first and goal play for a yard. Bubba Bolden stuck his nose into the business at the safety spot for Miami. There's a look at the junior from Vegas. A year ago, a semifinalist for the Thorpe Award. Comes in with 34 tackles, Roddy, but that called his name much at all here in this first half. Yeah, and, and he's he's now part of that rotation at safety uh, so that they can get guys like Cameron Kitchens more reps. James Williams is really the one that, that doesn't come off the field very much. Here's Howell, second and goal from the six. Four minutes gone, period two. Howell, up, downs, came back to it rather than continuing to the corner. Incomplete. Yeah, it's just two guys not being on the same page. Downs reads that he doesn't have he, he's, he doesn't have the defender stacked. So watch this. Downs is reading that I don't quite have it going out, so I'm going to come back in. Sam Howell read that as, hey, you got to step on Gervin Hall, so keep going. This quarterback receiver not being on the same page. So third and goal. What do you like here? Josh Downs. He's in the slot to the top on the hash. He's got one on one. You're likely going there. Miami moved, I believe. Jonathan Ford. Prior to the ball being snapped, offside, defense, number 96 with contact. Half the distance to the goal, third down. It's the with contact part that makes you blow it dead. 
96 on the right side of your screen. You can't hit the ground. Now if you care, Howell threw right. <laughs> that was where Antoine Green was, by the way. Two tights to the bottom of the screen. Howell. That ball caught. Touchdown. John Copenhaver. Second catch of the year is a touchdown. At some point today, we will likely call the names of four North Carolina tight ends. Copenhaver, as you said, is second catch of the season, the least likely to get in the end zone of those three, but executes extremely well on the play. Action slips out into the flat and catches the touchdown pass. 13 plays, 81 yards, 6.04 the time of the... Well, North Carolina's now got a two-touchdown advantage on Miami, or 11-point advantage on Miami after their second touchdown in the last three drives. And a moment ago, one of the great... Tar Heel offensive lineman of all time, Harris Barton, honored here on campus by the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame. He'll be formally inducted in December out in Las Vegas. He joins a list of Tar Heel legends who have received the honor from the National Football Foundation. You see the first team All-America 1986, ACC's most outstanding lineman. Don't forget the Super Bowl championships with Joe Montana and the 49er teams as well in the resume of Harris Barton. And he is downstairs with Alex Chappell. Thanks, Wes and Roddy and Harris. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations. What a special day and what an honor to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. How do you put it into words? You don't. You know, you just, you just, I'm humbled and blessed. And uh, thank God I got a chance to have my family here to watch it and my wife, kids, and all my high school buddies, my college buddies. It's just, it's just an amazing experience, it really is. When you think about your playing career here, in what ways did that set just such a strong foundation for the incredible career you had in San Francisco? Well, when I came here, this was known as an offensive line school. It had a lot of great offensive linemen that had come here. I had a great coach in John Matsko who taught me how to play the game. And it just kind of, we had a big passing attack which really set up for my, uh, for my pro game. And you know, just had had you know had a good running attack with Ethan Horton and, and Tyrone Anthony. It just everything kind of worked. And so when the 49ers were looking for an offensive tackle, they picked me because I had great experience here at, at, at Carolina. Oh, that's great. And as you look at these players now with the experience they're getting, but this season three and three as they're looking to turn things around, what advice would you give to them? I just you know, my only advice I've watched all the games and it's just they're missing one or two plays. Somebody's dropping a ball. Somebody's missing a tackle in crucial situations. If they just clean that up, this is a team that could go to a bowl game and could be, you know, could have a great rest of the season. Harris, thank you so much for your time. Wes, Roddy, back to you. All right, Alex, thank you, and congratulations to Harris Barton of Dunwoody, Georgia. Van Dyke flushed from the pocket on third and ten, looking for the first down, and we'll get it. Roddy, you saw him make a big run on third down, or fourth down, I guess, a week ago Thursday. He does it on third down here. Yeah, he's a guy that is not a quick runner, but he is fast when he gets in the open field. A lot of room on that right side, and he took advantage of it. So Miami keeps the drive alive. Van Dyke got 11. It's their first third down conversion of the day. You see the discrepancy in total offense here in this first half. Van Dyke on a play fake. In the traffic intercepted Cedric Gray. It's an ill-advised throw by Tyler Van Dyke. A really nice play on the back end on the ricochet of catching it by Cedric Gray. Looked like Van Dyke was reading this, and the defenders draped all over his intended receiver, and you don't think as a quarterback, hey, this could get popped up in the air, but you're throwing it into traffic. There's nowhere to throw that ball, and I believe it was Tony Grimes that ends up making the play, and he's all over Charleston Rambo, knocks it down. Knocks it up, actually, into the hands of Cedric Gray. 
big momentum play for North Carolina. Now Howell and the Tar Heels trying to add to the lead. And now he's going to take a timeout. Sam Howell with four on the play clock. We'll take it with him in Chapel Hill. Big play. Well, Cedric Gray, the interception, the Tar Heel linebacker, who came in with 21 stops in his last three games, Roddy. But Sam Howell gets the ball back on the red zone doorstep. And he's been on fire. It's been mostly him running the football, which has been a big part of his game this year. But when he's not running it, he's throwing it to 11. And 11 has done a great job so far. Sam Howell's legs have been, a, again, the big difference. And then another touchdown to his tight end, that being John Copenhaver. Sam Howell's been on fire. First down give, D.J. Jones left side, slips through for nine, almost ten, before Steed, the linebacker, cleaned it up for Miami. The push by this Carolina offense has been impressive. I mean, D.J. Jones has taken that sort of gather step three yards down the field, which means the offensive line has moved the defensive line more than three yards down the field. Jones will stay in the game. Second. Here's the give to Jones. And I think, does he have enough for the first down? James Williams collided with him. And Wayne Height says yes. First and 10. Carolina can get another first down without a touchdown. As Carolina gets closer to the end zone, Miami has to bring more bodies down towards the line of scrimmage to sell out to stop the run. Downs will come out, the tight end, Walston. Roddy, I was going to note this before the Copenhaver TD catch a moment ago. 88 Morales has been a TD machine at tight end for Carolina. And four on the season, one last week as well in that game against Florida State. Yep. Four straight games with a touchdown catch. Give is to Jones. And he just kind of moves that stack toward the nine. A couple of yards for DJ Jones, who had a career high 11 for 60 against Florida State. He had had 15 carries in the previous five games, but got 11 attempts in last week's loss to the Knowles. Bill Longo, the offensive coordinator, also signals the plays in, does it from the sideline. Josh Downs going to the top of your screen. He's the second man from the top. And the whistle blows here. I think it's on Miami. Well, left guard Joshua Zudu was leading his case to the referee Dwayne Dwayne Height, imploring and pointing at the Miami defense, maybe trying to get a simulation call. Sam Howell was stepping over to litigate on his club's behalf and was asked to step away. <laughs> now he's following. <laughs> That's a long discussion about what is Manny Diaz now has come off the Miami bench. Ball start. Offense number 72. Five yard penalty. Second down. And I think they're Roddy. I think uh, Richards is guilty of the penalty. But I think what you're talking about is there's something going on between Carolina and Miami in terms of verbal cadences, right? Well, this has been something that we've seen a lot this year in college yep. football. Uh, defense is clapping. Right. Like everybody claps, but offensively, so much of what you do to, to signal the snap is clap now. And so we've seen a lot of these uh, delay of game penalties for defensive simulation of the snap count a lot. And, and that time, Carolina saying they were doing it, but the call goes against the target. Yep. Howell with a bunch look here to the bottom of the screen. Who's in the pocket now has to buy time. Back line end zone. Morales was the guy, but broken up on the way there by DJ Ivy. 
It wasn't broken up. It was dropped. That was a, that's a dropped interception. And Miami had, as Manny Diaz had, four chances last week at interceptions. Two of them in the end zone, right through the hands of Miami receivers. One ended up in, in, in Dontavian Wicks's hands. Yeah. But Miami needs to execute in those situations. You have an opportunity for an interception. Come down with it. So now third down. A weird formation. Yeah, no Carolina. kidding. Now they put Simmons and Downs to the left. Here's Downs looking for blockers and a great tackle by Williams to square oh, Downs at the 12. That's a heck of a play by the freshman. Well, and, that, and that's a sh that's a sign that he's been in his playbook. He's been in the game plan because that little fake bubble jailbreak screen is something that North Carolina loves to do. He gets the read on it and absolutely flies from the secondary. It's a it's a fantastic play by the freshman and one of those plays that you only make if you've been in your game plan. So the interception by Gray and Carolina hope, hoping to take a field goal away from it. And the try by Atkins is good and they flag down. So hold on just a second here. What a sloppy game so far. Yeah. Personal foul. Rough in the kicker. Defense. Number zero. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. So don't mark it yet. Tell Major Y to turn the band down. He just sang the man's praises, James Williams, but a little too aggressive, it looks like. Oh, he gets bumped into him by his teammate. Yeah, that's... It's it's it looks worse than it ends up being. Sure, but it certainly is. I mean, that's that's contact with the kicker. It is that's a brutal, brutal turn for Miami. Two guys running into each other. He falls into the kicker, and you get the roughing called. First and goal at the six. Whole different dynamic now, Roddy. Yep. Josh Downs on the hash to the bottom of the screen. Will keep squeezes up the middle and trapped at the four yard line and Keontre Smith the tackle. I, I gotta be honest, we've seen Howell on almost called runs more than I thought we would here in the first half. Well, it's it's a big part of their offense now. Some of that because their inability to protect it helps out the offensive line. I don't like the hits he's taking. That's the part of it I don't like. So down near the goal line. Don't love him carrying the football like that unless you got a sure walk in. 53 yards on seven carries for the Tar Heel quarterback. That's Downs in motion. Chandler easily scores. Second touchdown of the day for Todd Chandler. Penalty on Miami comes home to roost with 6-16 to play in the quarter. Yeah, it's the second time you've had a penalty that's um, tough for Miami. Come back to haunt them. Atkins now to make it 28-10. to And it's the run by Ty Chandler after the roughing the kicker call that ends up it's five scores. He gets his second one of this first half. A moment ago to make it 28 to 10. And Miami will watch it sail out of the end zone. And Canes will scrimmage from their 25-yard line. And so far, tough afternoon at the office for Van Dyke. Don't forget, Monday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, a new documentary, Weird Number 1, the story of the 1990 Atlantic Coast Conference football season debuts here on ACC Network. It takes you to the November showdown in Charlottesville between Georgia Tech and number one Virginia. Great game. And it capsules the rest of what was a transformative year in ACC football. Monday night, 7 o'clock on ACC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app. Scott Sisson. Youngster with the educated toe. There's the throw, and Rambo, the intended receiver, and Tony Grimes going to be flagged for the pass interference on the Oklahoma transfer, Charleston Rambo. Dwayne Haight with a visit coming up here.
Pass interference. Defense, number 20. 15 yard penalty. First down. Tony Grimes. Lined up against Rambo. Gets a little handsy at the top of the route. Doesn't allow him to come back. Grabs the jersey. Good call by officials. Jalen Knight into the backfield now with Van Dyke. Miami runs their 18th play of the day, and it's Knight falling forward for a couple. Jeremiah Gimmel got enough of him to trip him up. Well, uh, the struggle is real for Tyler Van Dyke today, Roddy. Yeah, it certainly is. Only 16 yards passing today for this Miami team and for Tyler Van Dyke. And they've tried to take shots, mostly on the first plays of drives. Saw the, the flea flicker to start the game. On the last drive, they took a shot early on, but not able to find any of those completions. Van Dyke cuts it loose. Restrepo the catch. Xavier Restrepo to the Carolina 39 in a first down. Wes, it was a similar type play, corner route that got Tyler Van Dyke going against Virginia. He rips it to the corner, makes a big throw, and it sort of gets him going. See if that does it here. A little tempo action now by Manny Diaz's club. Another one to the end zone. Restrepo got tangled up. No flag on the play. And Carolina had Cedric Gray, the linebacker, stride for stride with Restrepo. It's a, it's a fantastic play by Cedric Gray. In Europe against a slot receiver in tempo, they catch you. You've got to defend it down the field. Keeps his poise, forces the incompletion. It's a good read, though, by Tyler Van Dyke. That is absolutely where you go with the football. Yep. So second in the full 10. Boy, Miami, who gets the ball to start second half, would love, love to have something on the board going to the locker room. And here is Knight making a move and took a big lick, but a first down to the 28-yard line on the hit by Kyler McMichael. Jalen Knight can absolutely fly in the game to try and provide some bursts for this Miami offense. You get a look at the rooster. Here's Van Dyke. The throw and breaking away is Keyshawn Smith inside the 10. A missed tackle by the Tar Heels. Gray saved the touchdown. McMichael got caught in between breaking it up and tackling Keyshawn Smith. Such a gray, though. He's been all over today. Touchdown saving tackle. Quick snap, Van Dyke looking for the end zone. Throwing for Rambo incomplete. Grimes will be flagged again. I think Tony Grimes is okay on both of the pass interference calls. He's okay until Rambo starts to go for the football. That's when he continues to be handsy, turn hands off the receiver, go for the ball. But both of those times, just a little too handsy with the ball in the air. Pass interference, defense, number two. By rule, the ball be placed at the two yard line. First down. It was 20, not two. Not one of the numbers. Let's see, look, you're fine there, you're fine there. That's when you're not. Pulled him back, right? Well, yes, it's that left hand that kind of is wrapped around. It's not the end of it. It's the left hand that's wrapped around that doesn't allow him to get back to the football. High formation for Van Dyke. Little play fake. Rolls right, throws. Mallory cannot hang on. Gimmel got a hand in the passing lane, the linebacker. Gimmel got his whole body in the passing lane. He's just <laughs> running to catch Mallory with his hands in the air, <laughs> trying to recover. But, it, like, that's a guy that's played a lot of football. He knows he's beat, raises his arm in the air towards the arms of Will Mallory and gets it in. Tight end to the right, single receiver. They're going to hand to Knighton, and he'll plunge for the Miami touchdown. Jalen Knighton's first rushing score of the year comes with 4.33 to play in the first half. And Miami, again, the beneficiary of some, some penalties that helped them get down and this time punch it in the end zone. But how about Tyler Van Dyke? It took him a little bit against Virginia to get into this game. That drive, maybe the drive to get him going. It's exactly what it took in the game prior. This time, we'll see if he can continue. Seven plays, 75 yards and 143. Borgalis to move the difference back to 11. And he serves it right through. But Jalen Knighton gets the score. 
Van Dyke buys him some positive momentum. The offensive line creates the hole. Cedric Gray has to take on a tight end out of the backfield, a fullback, in, in a, for all intents and purposes, wearing number 80 something. Wearing number 80. Powers him into the end zone. It's a it's a response drive for Miami at a time that they needed it. You get the ball first in the second half, and the way you get back in this game is score, stop, get the ball back in the second half, go down and score again. It's a new ball game. Well, we're talking about a team, too, that only had five yards of total offense prior to the drive. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. So a 75-yard march in seven plays and 143, and all of a sudden everybody in a white hat feels a little better. But Roddy four and a half left to go for a Carolina team with two timeouts and, and this Carolina team has not been its most the, the most explosive version of itself number this season as reported as number 45 but Ty Chandler with an explosive play Josh Downs with an explosive play they still if you blink and you let your guard down they can put it in the end zone quick right and they don't have to put it in the end zone quick with 433 I mean they can ease it on down the field but you don't want to let Miami double dip you here either. Certainly don't. Especially, and, and here's the other thing too, the mental side of this. Yep. You led 10-0 last week, you end up losing by 10 yep. to Florida State. You gave up big explosive to Jordan Travis. Yep. Malik McClain, a big touchdown. I mean, That's all it. sorts of little things happened. You got it, you got it. And mentally, both of these teams gone through adversity, not only in this game, but this year. Carolina will scrimmage from its 25 with four and a half to go. That's been some of the battle this week for Sam Howell and Phil Longo. Don't forget State Farm Halftime Report coming up. First half recaps of not only our game, but Blacksburg as well, where Pitt and Virginia Tech are meeting, and uh, a look ahead to the Pack and Eagles tonight at Chestnut Hill. Plus, Roddy asked the question, does the Javari Harvey pick six count as a big man touchdown? It's a big man touchdown. Cornette, Manuel, McLean, and Richt weigh in. It's a big man touchdown. Absolutely. You have cast your vote. They will add theirs. Then we'll resolve. Here's DJ Jones. Nothing on the play as we work our way toward four minutes to go. North Carolina is at their most dangerous when they're good on first down. And so that first down stop, huge for Miami. Get them in second and long. Now, if you can get them to third and long, that becomes the key. And you have to think, all right, this is going to be Sam Howell tucking and running the ball or Josh Downs, who's in the slot to the bottom. Second in the full 10 for Howell. They're going to run it with DJ Jones. He'll keep his feet. And second and third effort will get the first down to the 35. Jones's best run of the day by a long shot. That yeah, was, what, a 10-yard run? And I think there may have been five or six missed tackles. Just in that little bit of time. Howell spins it middle of the field, downs another catch. Working against Corey Flagg, the linebacker. You know, Josh Downs now with nine catches in this first half. One thing that he does really well that I don't think he gets enough credit for because he's so good elsewhere is find space. He's so good at finding those little pockets in the middle of the defense. Off the 46 with 320 to play. Howell called run and a lot of room. He'll slide at the Miami 40. It's a weapon, Roddy. This year, Phil Longo's had about as good a feel as anybody for that quarterback draw. You know, there's there's sometimes we see, you know, the the, the counter read or the, the zone read. But that time, it's just a straight quarterback draw, and there's nobody in the middle of the field for Miami. Yep. Under three to go. Howell going to run again, tries to find a spot, keeps his feet again, and will have a Tar Heel first down to the 29. <laughs> All right, so, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try and count the missed tackles on this one. Okay. It's another 10-yard run. Let's see if we can count them. And Sam Howell takes the snap, he drops back. I'm going to count that as one. That's two. That's three right there. That's four in the open field. I'm going to say, okay, you got him down there on the back end. It wasn't, it wasn't impressive. Howell thought about the quick throw. Now bullets one to Downs. And he will drive to the 45 with 225 to play. 
So you're going to stand at four on the missed tackles? Yeah, I'll, I'll say three and a half because uh, whoever was, was at the defensive lineman didn't get the number, but he was kind of tangled up. But, but that was why that was one of the keys. I mean, Miami has struggled so much this year tackling the football. We saw it earlier on the D.J. Jones 10-yard run. Second down and 10, missed tackles, 10 yards. Same with Sam Howell here. Downs has a career-high 10 catches in the first half. Second and seven. And Jones trying to find an alley and will be tackled on the shoe tops at the 25 by McLeod. All right, so you're on the fringes of field goal range. You're in field goal range if you're North Carolina on offense. Miami defense, this third and six, this is how you get your, your, your team in the game. Mm -hmm. You come up with a stop here. Right. And limit the damage that's been done so far. Your offense isn't going to have a lot of time. Two timeouts, though, so maybe you get a response. But the big thing is you need a stop. Josh Downs in that bunch formation, so dangerous to the top of your screen. Here's Howell at Miami bringing heat. Sam in trouble, and he'll be sacked and out of field goal range. Back at the 39-yard line, Keontre Smith. A tremendous play by Miami. And a timeout taken by Manny Diaz with 106 to go. Well, they're going to put some time back on the clock because Manny Diaz and that signal was coming with about 110. But how about right up the middle? You get Keontre Smith being able to bring down Sam Howell, too. I mean, how many times have we seen Sam Howell get out of that because of his strength? Wanted to throw the ball, but did not have time because of Keontre Smith. And let's not. Let's not forget Jafari Harvey able to get back there, too. Boy, Manny Diaz's staff dialed one up there, Roddy. Oh, Perfect they... timing on the delayed move by the striker. Perfect timing. And as you said, knocks him out of field goal range as well. So that is a big play. See what North Carolina opts to do. We saw earlier today, Jonathan Kim, the kickoff specialist, was banging him in from about 60 yards yeah. on these field goals. So we'll see. If they come out and attempt the field goal, who it is, and no, they're going to go ahead and punt. We'll say the wind was going, they would be kicking into the wind. Oh, I'm sorry, it is going to be a field goal attempt. Yeah, Grayson Atkins. Who also was hitting him from 50-plus in pregame. His career is 51. He hit it last week against Florida State and a year ago against Virginia. This is 52. I'm starting to say earlier the wind, this would have been into the wind. Not a lot of wind right now, though. Kiernan will hold, Drew Little snaps, kick is away, it's got to hurry, and it's offline to the right. So a miss from 52. Atkins on the year now is five of nine. And Miami, 65 yards, 65 seconds, and two timeouts. Yeah, you've, you've got one timeout. They, one timeout, they took, Yeah, you. they took the timeout before before the field goal attempt but uh, this is a this is a, a great scenario for Miami how quickly it turns North Carolina all the momentum looking like they're going to score take the sack miss the field goal Miami has good field position here the freshman quarterback Tyler Van Dyke starting to feel it a little bit on that last drive four receivers to the top Van Dyke Tar Heels rush four. Long throw to the backside and dropped by Cameron Harris. A minute to go. Don't forget Sunday best on your way tomorrow here on ACC Network. Volleyball starts us at 1 o'clock. Pittsburgh, number four in the country against Florida State. And then at 3 o'clock, women's soccer. Number 17, Notre Dame visits number two, Virginia. Sunday best on ACC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app. Two by two look here for Miami. With a minute even to go. Van Dyke, middle of the field, intercepted. Picked off by Cameron Kelly. Second interception thrown by Van Dyke in this first half. Cameron Kelly read it like a book, was all over that route. And it hurts even more because he missed Mike Harley on the play before, who was open over the middle. But watch nine at the bottom right of your screen, sees the route, changes his eyes, looks at the quarterback so that he can make the play. Tyler Van Dyke never sees him.
but it's a great break, a great read by Cameron Kelly on the back end, and now North Carolina in a great position to end up with points. Tar Heels from the Hurricane 42, two timeouts and 55 seconds. Howell under duress will throw it out of bounds, second and 10 coming up. Zach McLeod, or no, Chance Williams, the defensive end, 33, not 53. And the belt has been awarded to Cameron Kelly. should get the belt. That was, that was a really nice play. That looked like the old Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling TV title belt that Bob Cottle used to hand out. Yeah, exactly. And he's describing, I love it when the guys on the sideline relive. He's like, it was right here. It was right here, and it kind of, you know, popped up, but I got it. Here's Howell dancing right. Back foot throw and a bullet over the head of Antoine Green and a flag for a late hit coming. Personal foul, rough in the passer. Defense, number 53, landing with his full body weight on the quarterback. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Zach McLeod. Come on. You're going to see Zach McLeod. Oh. I mean, what's he supposed to do? How is he supposed to land, Wes? Like, uh, he's in midair. Sam Howell's in midair when he hits him. How is he supposed to not have that not happen? Does he let go midair and, and like, fall off? I, I, I get we're trying to protect quarterbacks, but, but, I mean, he's going to make a play. And he grabs him while Sam Howell's in midair. There has to be some sort of discretion to say, all right, like, look, there's nothing else that guy could have done. Ball to the 27. Little delay and DJ Jones. Carolina will have to burn a timeout here. And they do call it with 39 seconds left. And it, it's the second time we've had a, a quarterback uh, a roughing the passer call that I have completely disagreed with. And, and look, by the letter of the law, that may that may very well be right. roughing the passer. But if that's the letter of the law, then the law needs to be changed. Because that's it's brutal. It, and it's at a time for Miami where they've got to stop. It's a crucial part of the ball game. And the fact that he gets penalized for doing the only thing he can do is just, I mean, it's ridiculous. Right. I, I won't say anything more about it. I'll move. I'll move on. Kind of like move. the gray area of targeting, Roddy? Well, at least there's some gray area there. Like, I would love for there to be gray area here. Sam Howell is in the air. He can't, he's not going to pull off. So what is, what else, where is he supposed to land? His body weight can only go one way, and it's forward. Like, right. you can't change the way your body weight's going while it's in the air. It's just, it's ridiculous. I said I was done, and you guys brought me back. <laughs> now I'm done. I hear you. I'm finished. Okay. You sure? No. Okay. I'm done. North Carolina's got to take it. Back. That's all I got to say. 39 seconds to go. Second and six out of the timeout. Carolina with one left, leading by 11. Howell cuts it loose behind Olsen. Justin Olsen was kind of lonesome out there in the middle of the field, Roddy. Yeah, he, he was. Miami's dropping numbers. They're able to get pressure, only bringing four. So they're able to drop a lot of numbers. And Olsen did find a little spot, but because you're able to force Sam Howell out of the pocket, he's kind of scooting to his left. It's an errant throw. Josh Downs has been very quiet here the last few drives. But there's been less man-to-man -man from Miami as well. A little bit more conservative play calling, although I think you may get man here. They were able to get to him on a blitz last time they did, though. Third down. You're going to get pressure from that left side. Beats six. Howell in trouble again. In the pocket, tried to just buy time and ultimately got sacked again. That time, DeAndre Johnson and Amari Carter. And they'll push it to the back end of Atkins' range here one more time, I think. You have to really credit the Miami defense twice coming up, not only with the stop, but the sack on third down to force the long field goal, especially after the change of, of possession, the quick change of possession on the interception. Mac Brown calls a timeout, and they're going to attempt a field goal. So the final Tar Heel timeout with three seconds left. And he rolled almost right into the arms of Jared Harrison Hunt. And then yeah. when he turned around, Amari Carter was right there. It's a good thing Amari Carter's body was off to the side. <laughs> but it's a nice job on the wraparound by Harrison Hunt. And then Amari Carter ends up finishing it. 
But again, you, you can't say enough about this defense. I get there's been some frustration from Miami fans right. about the way they performed overall. But this team hasn't quit at all. This team is playing hard, and this defense especially. They've had four, they have flaws, and they've given up plays. But they really settled down the back half of that second half, of this first half. 48-yard try by Atkins will be the final play of the first half. Center of the field. Went kind of whipping around here a little bit. And that kick is going to be perfect. Carolina gets three going to the locker room. It's a nice job of the defense. I would consider that a win for Miami's defense, forcing Carolina to kick the field goal, especially after the interception. Grayson Atkins punches it through, and they may be down two touchdowns, but I think Miami's going to be feeling pretty decent on defense for how they did the back half of that second first half. 31-17 at the break. State Farm Halftime Report. Jordan Cornett, Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, Coach Ricker next on ACC Network. Dustin Poirier, one of the better life. Not about this one going in. Miami being motivated, having lost that game a season ago to Carolina, 62-26. Right. We've already given up 31 points here. It's on pace for UNC to once again score 62 points. Coach, what are you seeing in the first? Well, half? just because you're motivated doesn't mean you're going to play any better, and that's kind of what we're seeing right now. Uh, they're they're struggling mighty mightily on offense. I know Coach Lashley's trying like mad to find things that this kid could do, and it, it's hard to take a true freshman quarterback and throw him in the fire like that and expect big things. So. It, it's just uh, no running game. Throwing and catching is not good. They're, they're struggling a bit. A couple picks from Van Dyke in that first half. It's EJ, tough, what it's have a you, tough day. Yeah. yeah, you talk about the pick. One of them was just forced. I mean, they were throwing double slants in the boundary off a play action pass. And we talk about the footwork all the mm -hmm. time on a quick game. When you're riding a fake, you usually do a three step drop, but he just went right into a slant. Just, you know, kind of creating, making a bad play worse in a situation. And that's what young quarterbacks often do. And this is what we expected from UNC run the ball get going physicality wise that's what you want to see and Sam Howe I mean back to his old self it's every other game that's when we start seeing Sam really pick it up now they still need to protect him better but he's running the ball effectively when he gets out in space really have, have broken some great tackles which that's kind of part of the course for Miami there but would like to see this offensive line do a little bit better job protecting him three sacks give him the time that he needs to throw the ball it's been gritty from Sam Howe especially when he's tucked that thing shed a few tackles a couple of times really working to create some juice for his offense. This one feels like it's tracking towards potentially being lopsided. This Duke-Virginia game, it was lopsided. Yo, Bronco Mendenhall and UVA hosting Coach Cutcliffe and Duke. This one, a 12 draw, a dual threat guy, Coach, does it himself. Yeah, he's just having fun. It looks like a, a playground out there, and it's, and it's his game. You know, he's the first guy picked because uh, he's the best player on the field and he's doing it again. Every quarterback wishes he has a target like Jelani Woods, Eric. Man, he's freaky. Six foot seven, 270. Just throw it to him. He's a monster. He'll go get it. Virginia wins. Wins big. 48 to nothing. 364 yards. Another day at the office for Brennan Armstrong. Pitt, Virginia Tech. This one going on currently. Big time implications for the Coastal. Panthers trying to win in Blacksburg for the first time since 2015. Insert Kenny Pickett. Gavin Bartholomew for the eight-yard touchdown. Pitt leads 7-0. Midway through the second quarter, same score. Virginia Tech on their own 20. Braxton Burmeister may be playing hurt EJ, but has not looked himself thus far. Yeah, he hasn't. You know, and honestly, this play right here is just a disconnect on what the actual play call is. I mean, he's throwing a slant on time, ends up being an interception. That's tough. Pitt in business here, ensuing possession. First and goal for the Panthers. Kenny Pickett, a cool customer, tucks it. Nirvana. Pitt leads at this point 21 to nothing. What have you seen so far from this high flying Pitt Panthers offense in this first? Yeah, game? really just Kenny Pickett getting after it and doing what we thought that he would. A little bit of struggle early on. Uh, you know, this Virginia Tech defense played really well, uh, but he's finding his way, running the ball effectively as we've seen, uh, and then just throwing strikes. I mean, it's very impressive to see Kenny Pickett time and time again step How about up in the Wayne? pocket. Where, where did Wayne to. come from? I'm, I must have missed this kid. The, the what? Wayne. Five, number five. Yeah, number he's five. Like, who's Another number five? weapon. Robin. For this Panthers offense, it feels like there's a plethora of me. Yeah, there is. And I think another thing that's going to go to Kenny's resume is the fact that he's throwing the ball great in the win. So teams that are starting to really scout this guy, they're going to notice this game. Like, All right, well, he could throw it in the win. Maybe we bring him up north. I don't know. One of those teams I'm not about to say Chicago Bears, but they got a quarterback. But in, in all seriousness, my wife's Kenny's, attention. She Kenny, loved to see it as a Chicago Kenny, 
he's doing a great up. job. He's playing consistent, and again, he's playing with complete control. Anytime a quarterback can find a, a tight end in the flat or get it to a back in the check down, and it can turn into a conversion or a touchdown, that's going to be big. Pitt's defense playing great too. Uh, you know, get a shutout at this point to this game of Virginia Tech. Just uh, can't get anything going. I don't know if they even have another backup quarterback that's even ready to go. I think it'd be a massive statement for Pitt to go in there in Lane Stadium. It might not be the night atmosphere it was a week ago when Notre Dame went in there, but yet still a road win if Pitt can hold on and do this and puts them in prime position in the Coastal with bigger things in mind for them. The ground game has been a big part of Carolina's success. But this has heavy implications of the Atlantic race. Uh, what are you keying in on in this matchup? Yeah, I'm keying in on Dennis Grossell. How is he going to play in this game? Is he going to give a guy like Zay Flowers an opportunity to make plays? Uh, you go back to that Clemson game, they could have won that one. And then he's overthrowing Pose. He's overthrowing a couple of go routes. He just has to take a deep breath, relax, give guys opportunities to make plays. Yeah, Grossell is a guy they believe in, but has he really produced to this point? He's been good, not great. He gives them a chance. They have shifted their offensive attack a little bit. They've become, they're like 928 yards rushing, 1,100 yards passing, so it's very much balanced compared to, you know, when they had Jurkovic. So they may help them, but if they can't run against this defense for uh, NC State, number one in the league versus the run. That balance is going to be key, and it's going to be interesting to see how much does weather affect them. You know, if it's raining, I'm going to give the edge to the best defensive team, and that's NC State. And I just think those guys up front are, are going to get that push necessary. So then can you have the balance to also throw in the rain? When you look at NC State, those linebackers, they're, they just fly around. I expect them to make a really big presence today for NC State. Yeah, Garwo, his ability to run the football for BC becomes a focus because this pack defense, it's been special despite the injuries, giving up a league best, only 295 yards of total offense to the opposition. In this weather, does it become another one of those trench warfare games that remains to be seen? One thing we do know, Boston College has struggled mightily against eight AP top-ranked teams. Uh, 21 straight they have lost to a team with a number in front of them. The last win coming in 2014 versus USC. Wow. Be interesting to see how this one plays out tonight. Jalen Knight. The lone offensive touchdown for the Canes. Can they bring a comeback in Chapel Hill? Enjoy the second half. We'll see you post game. This halftime report is presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. minutes in our subway game refresh for Van Dyke. Yeah, it has been a couple of interceptions. This one tipped up in the air an ill-advised throw and then the one later on where he just gets read by Cameron Kelly who ends up coming up with the pick. It's an excellent job by the safety. But on the other side, Sam Howell has really done a nice job, especially on the ground. That's where he's been most effective outside of going to Josh Downs. His legs have been a big time factor throughout the year, creating blow broken tackles. He's also done it a little bit through the air. And by the way, you know, Josh Downs pretty good at football. You get him the ball in the open field. He takes it for a touchdown. And then Sam Howell added another one a little bit later. So it's kind of been a story of two quarterbacks. The experience of Sam Howell right. against the inexperience of Tyler Van Dyke. Soto's first half stats reflect Carolina's dominance. Important to know before the Miami touchdown drive that ended with the night score. The Canes only had five yards of total offense. They went 75 yards on that last drive to let Carolina kick the field goal to make it a two-score difference. And Miami will get the ball here as we start half number two at Canaan and Chapel Hill. Got a little chilly. We've kind of been through the weather spectrum here today. You just, you just made fun of me for saying it was chilly and putting my jacket on. Well, Here's the thing, as Alex Chappell will attest, it poured about 35 minutes before kickoff because it was so hot. And then we had the sun kind of peek out in the first half. Now the the breeze and the chill have kind of picked up here as we go to half two. We'll say Alex has been on top of exactly what the weather was going to be today. Yeah. She said, hey, look, guys, it's going to rain pregame. Second half might be a little, might be a little chilly. The temperature's yeah. going to drop. Been all over it. Our producer Rick Angelo thought he had an inside track on meteorology only to be trumped today by Alex Chappell. Started out at 86 degrees before kickoff now at 70 and here's Cameron Kelly on a first half carry of 15 20 20 six yards 22 yards for uh, Cameron Harris and he is down this is time out for injury. Cameron Kelly had the Carolina interception. Cameron Harris gets 22. 
and he is shaken up on the play. We will step aside early here at Chapel Hill, half two. Well, two touchdown difference. Cameron Harris being helped to the Miami bench, and thus the tent. Brought in another look at the run. 22 yards for the Canes. Yeah, and on the, on the back end of this run, his knee just gets caught up as he's going down, and never great to see Jalen Knighton with the carry there. And, and I think where it puts Miami is in a really tough spot at running back from a depth standpoint. Jalen Knighton, you have. After that now, it's Cody Brown who played a lot while Knighton was suspended. But pass protection becomes a big word. Yep. And the Rooster going to get a lot of run here in the second half if Harris can't return. Also, Thaddeus Franklin went for 88 yards in a score, but that was in the blowout of Central Connecticut State. So did Cody Brown. I mean, you know, we'll see how all that sorts itself out here depending on the extent of the Harris injury. Third and four coming up for Miami. Van Dyke, 5 of 15 for 59. And he's been picked twice. Quick throw and open for the catch, Mike Harley. Nice security blanket to have in the veteran Harley. It's a nice job of securing the catch by Mike Harley. You'd love a better throw from Tyler Van Dyke so you can catch that and run. But most importantly, they got the first down. Yep. At the Tar Heel 40 for Miami. Van Dyke wants to take the shot. Harley there and broken up by Carolina. Jaquarius Conley and had Trey Morrison back there, but another super play by Conley, who's been a star in the secondary today for Carolina. He certainly has, and he makes a really good play here because Con uh, Harley has a step on him, but Conley doesn't commit pass interference. Puts his hands up in the air and knocks the ball down. He's probably helped by Mike Harley. Mike Harley doesn't put that arm out. Right. Conley probably runs into him, but nonetheless, a nice play by number zero. Second in the full 10. This is Knighton around the corner, trying to run away from Kimmel and runs right into Kelly in the secondary. That's an 11-yard run for Jalen Knighton, Alex. Well, Wes, Roddy, I had a chance to catch up with both coaches before here halftime, and... Manny Diaz telling me that when you think of our team, we've got a lot of fight in us. You saw the way we battled back at the end of the first half. But with a young quarterback making his first start on the road, we got to make some big plays happen around him. Well, Knight stumbled Roddy when he got to the edge there, almost like the turf got him. Uh, it was Miles Murphy that, that pushed the offensive lineman into Jalen Knighton's into Jalen Jalen Knighton's lap. It's a tongue twister <laughs> after halftime. Cody Brown comes in the ball game. We see Miles Murphy's power come out a couple of times in this game, just driving to driving offensive linemen in the backfield. That's Mallory, the tight end in motion. Van Dyke wants to throw. Gimmel pressures, and the throw is caught. Keyshawn Smith, but he'll be taken down well behind the line. They're trying to set up the fake smoke screen wheel up the sideline to Will Mallory, but just doesn't have enough time to find it because Gimmel's coming through. It forces that third and long. If you're Manny Diaz in this situation, you want Tyler Van Dyke to try and cut it in half. You don't have to get all of it, but if you can get about 10, then it gets you to a much easier field goal or it gives you an opportunity to think about going for it. Miami just two for five on third down. Going to try and sprint it with Knighton. And Gray will throw him down shy of the 30. And Miami is going to keep the offense on the field here, Roddy. I wonder if they're not trying to, they're not going to try to get North Carolina to jump off sides. I'd be surprised if you snapped it fourth and 10 this early in the second half. I think you take the points. They are five for eight on fourth down van dyke scrambling from the pocket and will stretch for the first down ball pop loose but i think he's ruled down at the 18 on the field. and the that'll be enough for the first the down how and how much how much does the missed field goal at the end of the virginia game play into the mindset of manny diaz here fourth and ten 
you know you're going to need points. Tyler Van Dyke, nice job of tucking it down, scrambling, making a man miss, and yeah, clearly down. That ball hits on the ground as it pops out. Cody Brown, the running back now with Van Dyke. Van Dyke oh, looping for the oh, end zone. Smith tried to come back for it. There'll be a flag for pass interference on Kyler McMichael. McMichael had a hold of that back shoulder as Smith is trying to disengage and roll back. Pass interference, defense, number one, 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, we'll see that back shoulder as Smith's trying to roll back for it, just can't disengage, and McMichael's frustrated by that, but I mean, that's, it's about as clear as it gets. Now, the question is, was that, was that ball catchable? I actually think it was. I think uh, he could have right. gotten to it. He rolled back even further, or if he was able to roll back, kind of falling out of bounds. 11th play of the drive now. Got First and goal at the three. Cody Brown in the backfield now. First time we've seen him. Yep. And Brown's going to get the carry and runs right into a stack and bounces off and scores the Miami touchdown. Third rushing score of the year for Brown. Just ran into the pile. Nobody ever wrapped him up. I don't even know if any North Carolina players had a shot at him. Because of the job that the offensive line was doing, maybe Tamon Fox did. But a statement drive to start the second half for Miami. Right. Roddy? Like the second half, what, 16 days ago? Yeah, I mean, maybe this Miami team, this offense, maybe it's a second half offense. Well, it's 31-24 Carolina, but Miami, who only had 21 yards of rushing in the first half, had 59 on that drive, and Tyler Van Dyke went and got his team a touchdown. Yes, he did. And it's a team that, as we said at the top, they, they control their own destiny in the Coastal Division. If you win out, even though you have the loss to Virginia, Virginia already a couple losses in conference, so you would go to the ACC Championship game. Now, that's a tough schedule. NC State from the other side. Florida State's a team that nobody wants to play right now. This Miami team, if they're able to put it together, and that's a big if because they haven't yet, if they're able to put it together and win out, and they could still represent the Coastal. Touchdown difference. Carolina's offense to get it for the first time, and Conley will signal for the fair catch. Tar Heels will scrimmage from their 25. Sam Howell was 12 of 20. 104 and a couple of scores. Did have the pick six to Harvey. But he also carried the ball for 61 yards on 11 tries in the first half. Yeah. His legs were very effective. And finding Josh Downs was very effective. Josh Downs had 10 catches in the first half. Everyone else had two combined of those 12 uh, completions that Sam Howell had. If I'm Carolina, first play is going to Josh Downs. Look at this. Look, they better hurry and get somebody over there. Miami moving Bubba Bolden at least into the neighborhood. Here's how quick throw and Antoine Green midfield inside the 40 and to the Miami 34 goes Antoine Green to Corey Couch finally wore him down. This is where North Carolina is typically so dangerous. The RPO you get Antoine Green on that glance route that sort of skinny post right behind the linebackers and Sam Howell is so good at throwing this James Williams the safety sucked up doesn't get a finger on the football. And he just outruns to Corey Couch across the field. Tar Heels in plus territory on their second snap. Ty Chandler trying to step out of uh, a couple of tackles and fights for about three. Second and seven coming up. Nestor Jade Silvera, big number one for Miami. A guy who had major impact in what Miami did defensively last year, Roddy. Part of the tackle machine there. Yeah, he did. And, and he and Jared Harrison Hunt, Jonathan Ford is... They were part of a defensive line group that that have that he felt like Manny Diaz felt like is much improved from where they were a year ago, particularly playing the run. But this defense, they're gonna have any shot, they're gonna tackle better in the second half. Powell, Walston, the tight end. Uh, he'll be chopped down after a yard to the 30. Miami handled it well. Tyreek Stevenson, two in the white jersey, the transfer from Georgia with the tackle. There you go. Now that's a tackle. You come up, you hit Tyreek Stevenson. Did not play in the first half because of a targeting, but back in this one. 
There is what the preseason looked like on the left and what reality is in October on the right. <laughs> Where's Wake Forest? Get Wake That's Forest up there. Because Wake's not in that top five in uh, July. NC State. Again. Mac Brown told us the media, we got it wrong. <laughs> here's, here's Howell. Steps up. Sam with room. First down at the 20. 10-5. Touchdown, Carolina. We said it early on. You got to tackle. We've highlighted it a couple of times today. You have to tackle. How about the job, though, by Sam Howell? His legs have been a dangerous weapon today. James Williams goes all shoulder on the quarterback. And let me tell you, there's a quarterback in this league that's not going down with just a shoulder tackle. It's Sam Howell, his ability to run the football on full display. In 201, Carolina answers the Miami touchdown with one of their own. Sam Howell now has his fourth rushing score of the year. Roddy, he's got 91 yards on a dozen carries and bidding for his third 100-100 game of the year. I mean, in the offseason, he talked to the media, talked to us about how that was a piece of his game that he was looking to improve. He improved at it last year and has improved significantly this year. Has been much more physical in his runs, and while you don't love your quarterback taking some of these hits, you're in the open field and you think you have a chance to break a tackle, absolutely go for it. Spins off the freshman, James Williams, and is able to get in the end zone. Sam Howell fired up. What a job he has done throughout the season, really. It has not been as smooth throwing the football as it was previously, but he has moved this offense with his legs. You know, he's a quiet leader, a lot of it by example. But I think Alex talked about it earlier. He understands the intensity, he understands the emotions. But man, can he make plays? And, and from an NFL stock standpoint, there's been a lot of talk about what's going on with Sam Howell this year. Let me tell you, his ability to run the football is going to help him no matter what. Right. Miami from its 25 after the Tar Heel drive of four plays, 75 yards. And now the Canes find themselves down two touchdowns again. And Alex Roddy, I like the relationship we saw this week in our, in our preparation between Phil Longo and Sam Howell. Roddy, I, I respect the, the kind of, and we saw it with Mark Whipple and Kenny Pickett, too, yep. Roddy. Yeah, and these are, these are offensive coordinators and quarterbacks that have been together on their third season now. And, and, and the types of quarterbacks that you're talking about are guys that are experienced and have seen a lot. Van Dyke whips one in, and a great catch by Rambo. First catch of the day for Charleston Rambo. Is one for eight yards to the Miami 33. Similar coverage to the one we saw earlier get picked, but the difference is Tyler Van Dyke gets it out of his hands quick and gives his receiver a chance. And Knight will fight toward the first down. Jeremiah Gimmel had him wrapped up, and I think we're going to get third short here for Miami. A lot of time left in this game, but offensively, Miami's got to be feeling the pressure a little bit. Got to put up points on just about each and every drive. Here's Knight breaking free, 45, and Conley a shoot top tackle. Ball popped out. Carolina says they've got it back. Was he ruled down before it cashed out? A conversation on the field. The ruling on the field is that the ball carrier was down prior to the ball coming loose. First down. Well. There's a couple things going on here. One, great play by Jaquarius Conley, because that was one that was going to get out, and if Jalen Knighton gets in the open field, you're probably not catching him. Two, Jalen Knighton's got to hold on to the football. It's the second week in a row. Last week, late in the game against Virginia, puts the ball on the ground as they're trying to go score. Play stands to the 48. Van Dyke, back foot throw beyond the reach of Keyshawn Smith. Go back. You're going to take a look. Watch this right knee of Jalen Knighton. And you're going to hit the ground, and really it's the elbow yeah. down, and it pops out. Second in the full ten. 
Van Dyke, another quick throw. Mallory the catch. And that will be another Miami first down to the Carolina 41. Gray made the stop. And boy, it's been a, an interesting season. A lot of expectation for Will Mallory. Roddy just his 10th catch. Yeah, glad for him to enter the chat in this game. Here's Van Dyke. Again, Restrepo the grab at the 35. And a little more for Xavier. Finally pushed out at the 24 Carolina. And now we got Tamon Fox scrambling with Charleston Rambo in the Miami bench area away from the play. Dwayne Hay trying to restore a little order over there. A little, a little chippiness going on on the Miami sideline. Yep. This tempo has really helped Miami, though, especially if they get that first first down. Rambo the catch. Lowered his shoulder and pushed out of bounds. Finally on a collision there with Giovanni Biggers. Roddy, does the tempo help Van Dyke? Yeah, I think so. Uh, the faster you go, the simpler the defense typically has to be. I think also from a rhythm standpoint, it doesn't give the young quarterback as much time to sit there and think about all the things he has to go through. He's just got to snap the ball, trust what he's seeing, and throw it. Yep. Play fake tonight. Looping towards Smith again. Morrison came flying over there to break it up. Don Chapman also in the neighborhood. I'll tell you what, uh, that, that is a pretty darn good throw because you got to get it over there before Trey Morrison gets there. You got to put it at a place where your receiver can, goes for it with one arm. Look, Keyshawn Smith's capable of making that. This is our second arm is kind of being held a little bit. So by the way, Don Chapman and Keyshawn Smith, both from Lincoln High School in San Diego, battling there. Whistles blow. We got a marker down. I think Miami might have gotten an early start. Let me get Charleston Rambo. Part of the ball being snapped. Ball start. Offense. Number 11. Five yard penalty. Third down. Flag against Miami. Go back the canes up. Don't forget, we're number one. The story of 1990 ACC football premieres Monday night, 7 o'clock, on ACC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app, chronicling the transformative season of ACC football. Free play, Van Dyke throws it out of bounds, but was there any flag? the free play. No, nope. I don't think they no got it. No flag. How about that? So it's fourth and ten. They're trying to quick snap North Carolina, and... And that's on the center. The center sees him come across the line of scrimmage and snaps it. And remember, Ja'Kai Clark's first start on the road at center. Snaps the ball. There's no Carolina defenders are in the neutral zone. So Miami ends up with a wasted play. They thought they, thought they had a free play. They, turns out they had to pay full price. 42-yard try for Borgalis. He hit already from 44 today. kick away and it is good so Andres Borgales point lead on Miami under six to go here in the third with Roddy Jones Alex Chappell West Durham Rick Angelo our producer Kyle Lang is our uh, director today and our great ACC Network crew here in Chapel Hill they've had to about a little bit of the rain beforehand as well yes, thanks to everybody for their efforts to I'll bring a game one of our ACC doubleheader. BC NC State to follow tonight from Chestnut Hill. Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs standing by for you. Conley will return this. Jaquarius, 25, 30, 35. And they'll spot it at the 36 before Borgalis, the kicker, shoved him out of bounds. Listen, this from Conley. Look, we can do it all, man. I like, I like the way he plays. To Aquarius Conley? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's Got the right attitude. Conley. Yeah, <laughs> those defensive guys love it when they get the, the, their, their hands on the ball. <laughs> Makes a couple guys miss. Gets up the sideline. He says, look, I, I want to see. You ever I been a part of a football team, a defensive guy didn't like to run the ball? Oh, no. They're always lobbying for punt returns and kickoff returns. You were that good at it. You play offense. That's what we used to tell guys. D I'm not saying that Jones about Conley. Has nowhere to go. Miami shut it down. Jonathan Ford at 
315 out of Dillard in Fort Lauderdale. Led the charge. Here's big Jonathan Ford. 25th career, 26th career start today. Second and 12. Hand the ball inside, right? That goes nowhere, and that time Corey Flag fired through to make the play. A couple of nice plays on first and second down for Miami. Now the key, obviously, going to be getting North Carolina off the ball, but it's a nice job. This Miami defense that's already given up more yards rushing than they have all year in this game. Over 200 yards rushing so far for North Carolina. They're trying to go to on first and second down. At 91 belongs to the quarterback. Miami with pressure. Howell dumps it to Jones, and that goes nowhere. Miami, Keontre Smith, who's returned to the lineup and played great today, along with Jafari Harvey, who's got the pick six early. And Miami goes forces Carolina into a three and out. That's a quick three and out, too. It is. Get that offense. You just scored some momentum. They just got a field goal, I should say. It's some momentum. That's how it starts, though, if you're Miami. It's really about the stops as much as it is about the scores. Yep. Jacoby George waits on the punt of the Irishman, Kiernan. That ball is hammered. George inside the 15. Coming near side. 25-30, and eases out of bounds before Walston shoved him at the white at the 36-yard line. Carolina was looking for a flag over there. 55-yard punt by Kiernan. His best of the year. Mac Brown not happy without the flag coming as well. Trey Bly lobbying as well right next to him. And Don Chapman shaking up, it looks like. So Miami's going to start. And it's 35. Well, you see the details. It's an 11-point game with 342 to go in the third. It's been it's been a fight all day for Tyler Van Dyke in his first road start. Yeah, it has. And yet this Miami team only finds themselves down by 11. You can put the ball in the end zone here, or even get a field goal here. It gets really interesting. Yep. Here's Van Dyke backing up. Steps out of the pocket, and as he goes to slide, takes a shot near the 41. No flag on the play. It's a run of five. Cameron Kelly, the guy that made contact with the Miami quarterback. He got really fortunate that yep. he pulled up. It was very smart of him to pull up as well, but almost got caught in that, 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 that commitment area where you can't, so... He avoided what could have been disaster for him. And as Hodges a tight end in motion here is Van Dyke rolling right. He will dump it. And the catch made Brashard Smith. Another one of those youngsters. Seventh catch of the year for Smith. Tamari Fox runs him out of bounds. It's third and five. I thought we'd see more of Brashard Smith today. We yeah. did a lot with him in that Virginia game trying to get him the ball in space. But I haven't seen a ton of it. Now on this third and five, the question is, where do you go? There hasn't been sort of that go-to. You've got one-on-one -on -one at the bottom. Mike Harley in the slot to the top. Van Dyke, wide open, Knighton. Made a man miss. Knighton will take it the distance for Miami. Kyler McMichael was the last line between Jalen Knighton and the end zone. Wow, what a play. Third and five, you get the ball to your explosive back in the backfield. Tyler McMichael makes a miss, and he's able to take it to the end zone for a touchdown. I'm a little surprised here, Wes. Miami opting to kick the extra point rather than go for two and make it a three-point game. Nonetheless, you get the touchdown, which is the most important deal. 2.25 to go. The try by Borgales. Miami has outscored Carolina 17 to 7. Here in the third. 
look at this again. Tyler Van Dyke goes through his progressions, and this is why you hit your, your outlet. This is why you dump it off, because when you have a guy like Jaden Jalen Knighton, as soon as he made Kyler McMichael miss, I'm sorry, Cameron Kelly, but it was game over. And that dude can absolutely fly down the field. And again, Miami, one of the keys was creating explosives. Explosive plays on the offensive side of the football so that you don't have to just slowly and steadily move down the field. Jalen Knighton does that. And again, Wes, like you, you're always the voice of reason here, I feel like, when I get all excited about teams going for two or not going for two. Why don't you go for two then? You're down five. Right. The, 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 get, get the card. The card says down five. Go for two, Wes. I'm telling you. Player number 18 is the card says down five. You go for two. Absolutely. You try and make it a three-point. Like, what's the difference being down four and being down five? You need a touchdown to win it no matter what. All right. So, so go for two. Bring yourself in a field goal. Maybe Manny Diaz didn't feel great about the two-point play they had. There's a lot of factors that go into it. But, man. By the way, I like Jalen Knighton's yard for catch. That was his first catch of the year. Wow. <laughs> Won't be his last. Borgalis, and there'll be no return. So Carolina now up four and the ball, Alex, but Miami's got a little vibe on offense. They do, and after their last drive, just before that scoring play, actually watching Rhett Lashley talk with his offense, talking with his running backs, he said, hey, just start to get to the outside and things will open up. Well, safe to say, Wes and Roddy, message received. We've talked a lot about Miami's inability to tackle. Carolina has been almost as poor tackling throughout the season. Right. And they have tackled well today, with the exception of that one. But, I mean, it rears its head. It's ugly, ugly head. The tackling woes, one of the worst times. First down feels pretty important here if you're Phil Longo, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Howell to throw, looking for downs. That's his first catch of the second half, I think. Cameron Kitchens, the tackle on Josh Downs, who had 10 first half catches. And that's his first of the second half. And it comes with 2.09 to go in the third. Well, they, they've got to find ways to get him the ball, but Miami seemed content to play off for the most part of Josh Downs, rally to the football, and if you can get there right as he's catching the ball, it's before he gets ahead of steam and can make you miss. Powell going to hand the ball, and firing through is Ty Chandler. It'll be third and about four. Williams the tackle. So North Carolina, who on the day is six of 11 on third down, has third and let's call it the full five, Roddy. Yeah, and we got Josh Downs in the stack to the bottom. Let's see what they decide to do. Looks like the Corey Couch is going to be on him. Here's Howell. Pumps down to his right in trouble. Sacked. Keontre Smith got back there and was kind of in the in the woods lurking, and then was patient enough to slow down. This, to make is the a, play. this is a comfort sack. Watch the bottom. Josh Downs breaks in, and there's two guys there. Sam Howell doesn't feel comfortable throwing it, and so he's got to roll out. It's a nice job on the back end of not only to Corey Couch, but also the safety being aware of where Josh Downs is. When he breaks in, safety comes up. You got the corner on the outside. Sam Howell doesn't like the look. Miami gets the sack. Back to back three and outs for Carolina on offense now with 33 seconds left. And Kieran and DePont to George. George off the 35, and Chapman will ride him down at the Miami 38, and that's where the Canes will start. Don't forget tomorrow here on ACC Network. What's tomorrow, Wes? Sunday best, Roddy. Oh, oh man, Come I knew on, it. Dude. I knew it. Florida State welcomes Pittsburgh to Tully Gym for volleyball at, at 1 o'clock and then at 3 off to Charlottesville. Number 2 Virginia, number 17 Notre Dame in women's soccer. 1 o'clock is the lead for Sunday Best on ACC Network, streaming live on the ESPN app. Miami's got 180 second half yards to Carolina 76. Well, look, we, we talked a lot in the first half about Miami's defense coming up big. Carolina's defense needs to come up big here. Van Dyke a deep drop. And almost a play made by Hodges. 
That is Larry Hodges, the tight end. He went with a quick snap on a under center play. Tried to sneak Hodges up the seam, and Van Dyke just doesn't make the right throw. You got to get that to your tight end standing up. It was a little bit low. Hodges slipped as he was going down. Yep. Second and ten. And Knight running free. First down to midfield into Carolina territory at the 49 goes Jalen Knight. Tony Grimes the tackle. You have to credit this offensive line for creating the holes, but Jalen Knighton can get 10 yards in a blink of an eye. He's going to have to be a workhorse in this fourth quarter coming up. But we got ourselves a ball. It's go time. We start the fourth with Brown getting the carry on first down and Jeremiah Gimble and Ray Vahasek hit him head on for no game. Well, Roddy, Carolina. 38, Miami 34. And to be honest with you, Miami had all the momentum they wanted in the third. Yeah, they certainly did. It was a heck of a third quarter. Coming up with stops, you get the field goal, the explosive touchdown from Jalen Knighton. And it feels like the momentum's on that side. Talked about it when this drive started. This Miami defense kind of held him in the game. Now it's up to North Carolina to hold the lead. Here is Knighton left side. And he will fall forward toward the 42. Jaquarius Conley to tackle. And it will leave three for the first down. Third and three. Career high 74 yards rushing for Jalen Knight. And with the injury to Cameron Harris sustained earlier in the third period, it's Knighton's ball game with some help from Cody Brown. There's nobody over Mike Harley at the bottom of the screen in the slot. Van Dyke wants to throw, batted away at the line by Cedric Gray. Fourth down now. And because, Roddy, you're in that four-point differential early here in the fourth, maybe a decision for Manny Diaz and Red Lashley. Yeah, it was going to be a long field goal anyway. Manny Diaz went for it on fourth and ten earlier, but this one, even though Tyler Van Dyke is a tall quarterback, that's a really nice play by Cedric Gray. They're leaving the offense on the field. Carolina's but gone clock's three out their last two possessions. Do you think about punting it, Roddy? Uh, you do think about it, but they have opted not to. I think I like the aggressiveness. They're going to have to hurry to get the playoff, though. Ten seconds left on the play clock with a young quarterback. Snap to Van Dyke. Quick throw. Incomplete. Looking for Harley. No flags. Giovanni Biggers defending in the secondary. Yeah, they, they, they took a long, hard look at it. I, I don't I don't love what you ended up with. Mike Harley in the slot just running a little five-yard stop. I don't love that. There's no movement. There's no, there's no picks. You're not really forcing North Carolina to do anything. You see the defenders just sitting on it the whole time. Giovanni Biggers does a nice job knowing the situation, so I, I, don't, I don't love what you ended up with on the throw. I do. I don't mind the decision though going forward on fourth down. Chandler will join Howell in the backfield. Downs in motion. They're going to hand it to Chandler. Fights through toward the 48, maybe the 49. It'll be a gain of seven. Second down in the full three after the McLeod tackle. You see the scoring margin in the fourth quarter this year. The last two years. They've led FBS at plus 116. They used to light people up a year ago. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this is, this, this is not that offense, but but still a, a team that's dangerous in the fourth quarter. And look, Manny Diaz may feel like, hey, whether we give it to him on the, the 50 or we pin him back deep, this is always an offense that's capable of catching fire. So the best thing that we can do right now is keep the ball in our offense's hands. I don't, I don't, that's why I don't mind the call. They lost a yard that time. Amari Carter, the Miami tackle. Carolina's ready to go. Manny Diaz trying to get folks off the field. Yeah, Carolina did not sub, and Miami gambled by subbing. Oh, here's Howell, Sam, and what do we get here? Procedure on Carolina? We got lucky. Ball start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Jordan Tucker, one of three guys on the offensive line with 22 or more career starts. It's one of those penalties that you're happy for because the ball was snapped without Sam. That, that play had disaster written all over it. 
because the ball was snapped without Sam Howell being ready. He catches it. Nobody's running routes. It's pulling dead, though, because of the legal procedure. and gives you an actual chance, even though you've got a, a tougher time getting the third down, the third and nine. Yep, third down and nine. Twelve and a half to play in Chapel Hill. Down second from the top. Looks like man-to-man. -to -man. Miami blitz it. Powell throws. This is Chandler on the catch. Flag throw. It's a penalty against the quarterback because he got hit by James Williams, the safety. Chandler was taken down shy of the first down. Personal foul. Rough in the passer. Defense. Number zero. 15 yard penalty. First down. All right, let's get a look at this one. James Williams certainly doesn't think it is a roughing the passer. I like took yeah, it to the ground. That's it. You can't throw him down. Yeah. You can't throw him down. You're fine up until the throw down. Hey, I finally agree with one. Well, if you hold him up, it's not. Oh, yeah. I mean, you wrap him up, yeah, that's but he thing. doesn't go to the that's ground. Tell him. You, you can't sling the quarterback on the ground. Like, right. that's always going to be called. Yeah. But I did agree with that one, so. You my blood pressure. You're back on the holiday card list. Yeah, there you go. From the conference office. Here's Howell. He's going to keep it. And he'll slide at the 30. Crowd thought Miami a little overzealous there on the uh, stop of Sam Howell. Well, I, I don't. They're, they're a little upset because Sam Howell got knocked back down. It was the hip of Amari Carter that did that. It wasn't. Wasn't anything intentional. All right. But as Sam Howell is getting up, Amari Carter bumps into him. Looked harmless to me. Sam and Sales, Roddy? No, no, I think it was legit. Yeah. I think it was legitimate. He was off balance and got knocked down. But Amari Carter, it was his, it was his, his posterior that knocks him down. Second and five. Howell hands to DJ Jones. At the right, took a big lick, falls forward, and think he'll be short of the first down. Now, a moment ago, there's a flag thrown as well on the play. And I think Jones is a yard shy of the first, but let's see the penalty. After the play was over, personal foul. Late hit, number 81, defense. After this is to the goal, first down. Miami's coming apart at the seams. You had North Carolina on a third and long. You get the the roughing the pass. It's a great tackle. I think it was 91. 91. 91. <laughs> 91 is Jordan Miller. That's not that's not a late hit. Like the guys go, we see that, we see that all the time in college football. All the time. And, and it wasn't on Harrison Hunt, it was on 91, Jordan Miller. But you see that all the time in college football. I cannot, I, I cannot believe that was fair. First and ten. Howell in trouble and getting ready to be sacked by Corey Flagg. Whistles will blow. Corey Flagg, a play behind the line. Fourth sack of Howell today by Miami. Did a nice job playing that one. The receiver was open, but there was so much junk in Sam Howell's face that he couldn't see the receiver. He had no, no alley to throw the ball in. Second and 14. Chandler will move it toward the 11. It's a gain of six, third and eight coming up on the Bubba Bolden tackle. Between Carolina's ability to run Sam Howell and what they've been able to do on those inside zone plays, I mean, it's been incredibly impressive, them running the football. And on third and long, I mean, look, I think Miami's likely to bring pressure. The Sam Howell draw has been about as good a play as you've had today. Yep. Third and eight. How pumps now will run at the five, took a lick, bounces through, touchdown, Carolina. Flags are thrown on an ex 
A little bit of a skirmish after the touchdown for Howell. You know what? Sam Howell flex on him. If they're not going to wrap you up, continue to bounce off and get in the end zone. And when you do, flex because the quarterback has been as advertised today, maybe not in the style that we expected. Throwing the ball all over the place, but his ability to break tackles, his ability to run the football has been the difference today. 11-yard run for Howell. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play was over, we have offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct foul penalties. Unsportsmanlike conduct foul, number zero. Unsportsmanlike conduct foul, number 75 on North Carolina. Those penalties will offset. We will have a try for point. His second rushing score of the day to go with two throwing scores. And on both of them, he's breaking tackles in the secondary. And now, that is terrible tackling. You're just going with shoulders trying to hit the quarterback, but I mean, most quarterbacks go down with the shoulder, not number seven for Carolina. Atkins fires home the PAT, the lead 11. Including prescriptions, transportation, meals, and coverage for dental work with extractions, fillings, even dentures, all at no additional cost. Plus, depending on your zip code, the benefit that adds money to your Social Security check every single month. Call to check your zip code and get what you deserve. It's free. I call to save money on co-pays, get prescriptions, transportation, and my dental work covered. I couldn't believe I was- Robinson for the touchdown. Still pit big, 28 to seven. Wes, Roddy, take us home. Okay, Tavion Robinson trying to go WRU next week. <laughs> I like it. There's, uh, you know, less games, so a little bit less work for Pack on WRU. Oh, Pack's notes, though. Games. Packers notes will be strong. Yeah, Sam always. Howell, 99 career touchdowns at Carolina. Ties the school record held by Marquise Williams. Uh, well, so that, there's two things there. It shows you the incredible career that Sam Howell has had, but also people forget about how good Marquise Williams was. Yeah. Like that dude could play some football. Congratulations to Sam Howell. Yep. Uh, if he decides to run the ball five more times, my bet is that he uh, he eclipses that record. Can't, they can't talk. Can't Say talk. what? He's been impressive today. The run game's the real threat. You know. And, and look, like coming into the season. The talk was about Sam Howell, the thrower, Sam Howell, what he was going to do. But credit to Phil Longo and to Sam Howell. Like, right. this dude was getting top five pick conversation, and he's not sliding on these runs. Like, he's running through guys. Tyler Van Dyke back to work now. Miami trailing 11 in the game again, and Van Dyke just going to try and ease out of bounds. Well, here's the other part, too. And Alex spoke about this earlier, the focus, the intensity, the understanding of the moment. you got to process all that as a quarterback, Roddy, whether you're Sam Howell or Tyler Van Dyke. Yeah, yeah, you do. And Van Dyke has to, you, you got to focus on the task at hand. You're down to 11 right now. So at this point in time, the key is obviously one play at a time, getting the ball down the field, putting the ball in the end zone. That's all you can control. Straight drop, Van Dyke behind the intended receiver Keyshawn Smith. Carolina got Tamari Fox in through the fray. And I think he clouded the uh, the view of Tyler Van Dyke. Seemingly this is a big play with 8.30 to go. Uh, it may be the game. If Miami doesn't convert here, it's going to be tough. I think, I mean, Miami was up to the line quick. They could have caught North Carolina with 12 men. There's a little bit of confusion for North Carolina. Trying to communicate there on the back end. Miami four for ten on third down. Still still confusion. Yep. Van Dyke to his right. Now going to fire and Rambo incomplete. He was there with Tony Grimes. Boy, Van Dyke cut that rock loose. Cayman Rucker was chasing him. And unfortunately, he's got to keep it in bounds. It's hard when you're running, rolling that hard to your right to keep the ball in bounds. And North Carolina's defense comes up big. You know, Miami had all the momentum. Yep. 17 points in that third quarter. And Carolina's defense has come up now twice with big stops when they needed them the most. 
to really solidify his game. Lou Headley to punt it away to Josh Downs, who's been very quiet here in the second half. Flag thrown, whistles blow, and that's procedure, I think, on Miami. Part of the ball being snapped. Ball start, offense, number four, five-yard penalty, fourth down. And, and if you want to know why this game isn't what we expected it to be early in the year, that's Miami's eighth penalty. North Carolina's got nine. How many missed tackles have we seen? Ooh. How many missed blocks have we seen? Like, these two teams ju just are not what we expected, and you can see why. It's been on full display here today. Yep. Headley drives that away. It will hit at the Tar Heel 45 and check up right there. 11 point lead for Mac Brown. Network College Football is presented by the Eat Fresh Refresh at Subway. With Ronnie Jones, Alex Chapel, West Durham, Canaan Stadium, Chapel Hill. Great to have you with us tonight. Game one of our ACC doubleheader, NC State, Boston College, still to come from Alumni Stadium. Come on, Fox and the Tar Heels. Here's our Aflac trivia question. Tamon Fox passed Lawrence Taylor this season for fifth most sacks in North Carolina history. Who is UNC's all-time sack leader? Is this a trick question? I'm serious, Wes. <laughs> do you know the answer? Is it a trick question? No, I, I don't want to throw out the obvious, the, the answer that I think is obvious. Here's first down. <laughs> I need you to help me here. Why do I need to help you? You're on a street. On the line. You're on a street. All right, I'm going to go Julius Bethel. All right. See if that's right. If it's a trick question, I'm going to be a little Forgetting all about Marcus Jones. You're forgetting all about. Don't start throwing out guys. Robert Quinn played. Robert you know. Quinn was big time, too. You're forgetting had, about Robert yeah. Quinn. Tell you what, you're really forgetting about Greg Ellis, uh, D. Good. Hardison, Ronnie Robinson from the 70s. It's hard, it's hard to forget about guys I didn't see play, but you are correct. I need to look at the record book. <laughs> Irv Holdash. That's a name. I may take him just because of the name. Give to Chandler, near side, found one level, and gets to the 47. Yeah. Third, that's six. Steed, the first guy to get there for Miami. You, you kind of feel like, and it's not kind of, you feel like if North Carolina gets a first down here, it's, it's ball game. There's just not enough possessions left in the game without something crazy happening. Now, you and I have seen crazy this year, but. Yes, we have. Week two, we saw crazy. We sure do. <laughs> Tallahassee. <laughs> yeah. But you need a stop here if you're Miami on defense. And then a quick score. And then another stop. So Carolina so, also working the clock here, too. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Every second that ticks off, that's a less time for a possession that Miami has. Keep an eye on Olsen. Bottom of the screen. Here's Downs. He dropped it. That's incomplete. I think Josh was trying to run before it arrived. I, I, I know how it turned out. I love that play, though. Yeah. He faked his own to the right side, to the left side. Everyone on the right side is pausing, and then they spring into action, forcing the defenders to react quickly. I love the play, not the execution. See, here's the part that probably drives Phil Longo and Mac Brown crazy. That is Carolina's third three and out in their last four possessions. Yeah, yeah. So a frustrating second half without the one, and then and then the the extended drive was roughing the passer. Right. Play down the field. That was a late hit. They got five second half possessions. They have three three and outs and two touchdowns. Yeah, controversial they hit in my Karen trying to flip the field on Miami. It's going to hit and skip out of bounds at the three. Boy, how about the luck of the Irish on the bounce by Karen? No, that's skill of the Irish right there. That looks like you playing on the links. Oh, not that good. 50 yard punt for Karen. Ball out of bounds. Miami backed up when we continue. All right, Miami starts from its three. Here's our answer to the FBI right. trivia question. Who's Carolina's all-time leader in sacks? Final answer. Yeah, it was Julius Peppers, and now I see it's Greg Ellis. <laughs> Come on, man. I asked you if it was a trick question. The streak is over. Van Dyke looping it downfield for Smith. Intercepted. Don Chapman. No, oh, ruled incomplete. He didn't hold it through the catch. Oh. Oh. Ruled incomplete on the field. There wasn't a lot of protest from Don Chapman. I looked away though as he Rolling went to the, the ground. It's an incomplete pass. Second down. 
He's got it there. You have to survive the ground with the ball. Doesn't no, do it. Yeah, clearly, do it. clearly, clearly. He almost trapped it on his wallet. I know that would have been a wide receiver U nominee had he done it. That, that you know what? Wicks neighborhood. You know what, Wes? What's that? This is that's a win for the glove guys. Don Chapman, a no glove guy, intercepts and hits the ground. Second and ten for Van Dyke on an empty set. Got to run with it and get to about the eight. Cedric Gray, the linebacker, has been really good for Carolina today. I was just about to say that. Cedric Gray has had a ball game. Matter of fact, Jeremiah Gimmel has as well, much more quietly, but Gimmel's got eight tackles on the day. Cedric Gray has been excellent at linebacker as well. These two linebackers are really good for this team. Different, though. Gimmel, the older statesman, and Gray, the young sophomore. Miami, you see four of 11 on third down today. It's not been great for the for the uh, for the Canes well, on they, third down. They came in ninth in the league. And they had hit 11 of their last 28, five of 15 against Virginia, four of 11 today, and we get a flag and procedure on Miami, which will cost them half. And we'll replay on third. Part of the ball being snapped. Ball start. Offense number five. After this is the goal. Third down. Just kind of see the look on Tyler Van Dyke's face as he wandered back. Look at Jalen Knight and Tamon Fox are. And they went all the way to the Carolina bench. And Carolina's little, fired up. Well, Miami, it's gotten a little chippy as we've noted. Certainly has. Miami frustrated. Carolina happy to stoke those frustrations. Here's Van Dyke. He'll cut it loose. Rambo the catch. First down, Miami. Bigger's the stop near the 20. It has not always been smooth today for Tyler Van Dyke, but you can see the talent flash. That is a throw across his body back towards the middle of the field that he absolutely drills in there. 16 yard throw. Carolina trying to get guys lined up. They're going to play fake tonight, throw it on the slant, and Smith got blasted by Morrison and a flag. It's going to be a targeting. Yep. Trey Morrison and Keyshawn Smith with a big collision on a 15 yard catch. Defense, number four. The previous flag is under further review. This big, Trey Morrison would miss the first half of the Notre Dame game if this is confirmed. Time out in Chapel Hill for review. Look at, while we return to Chapel Hill, there was no targeting on the play with Trey Morrison and Keyshawn Smith. Roddy, tell uh, me why. This is how the process should work, Wes. On this, they go and they review it. And while Keyshawn Smith is a defenseless receiver, he does not attack the head or neck area. It's shoulder to shoulder contact. And Trey Morrison is not ejected. Here's Van Dyke sailing it. And a catch by Harley. Is it in bounds? It is at the Carolina 40. Tony Grimes with a big lick on the back end, but Harley held on. 25 yard bullet from Van Dyke. Great catch on the back end. And oh, we're going to get a review. Gonna have a look at this. See if we can go two for two. Yeah. Rolling on the field is a completion for a first down. Previous play is under further review. So left foot. Yeah, oh, it's clearly catch. down and down. He's yeah. secured. Got it secured. Oh, they're. There's a question. It does hit the ground at some point. So all of those things are going to play into it. He gets the foot in bounds and he has control. But does it does it get jarred when it hits the ground? Because he's got it kind of pinned against his body. Does the ground aid him making the catch? I'm going to go with catch, but. Well, we walked some fine close. lines today. Boy, we? don't do it. In review. All right, so the, the question is, so you got it secured. Got it on his body. He's got the foot in bounds. All right, now you got to. The ground cannot aid in the catch. Yeah, I don't think it moves. It move, if it moves, it's. Yeah, I don't think it moves. So not I, it's a catch. It. Yeah, that's a catch. Should be pretty quick for Dwayne Haight. Getting the full look. 
After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Had a chance to uh, converse with our replay official during halftime about the first half targeting as well. And those guys do such a great job. It's a hard job, Wes. Ooh. You're looking at angles, trying to find fractions of an inch here or there. Our replay officials do an excellent job. Van Dyke over the top, incomplete. Trying to dial Romello Brinson. Let's go back to the uh, Keyshawn Smith and Trey Morrison hit Roddy again. All right, so this is the targeting. And you're going to see the shoulder of Trey Morrison hit the shoulder of Keyshawn Smith. And again, there's two different targetings against a defenseless receiver. All you have to have, or a defenseless player, all you have to have is forcible contact to the head or neck area because it's shoulder to shoulder. Doesn't qualify for that. And Peter Voss, our replay official, determined that it was not targeted. Hand off to Knight. And just a couple of yards there it makes it third long. Bahasik stop for Carolina. Roddy, you mentioned it on the targeting call. Tar Heels get a bye before going to South Bend on the last Saturday of October in two weeks. Miami gets NC State at Miami Gardens next Saturday. Van Dyke backing up. Smith the catch, and Conley can't get to him before he gets the first down at the Tar Heel 29. He's got to hurry up and go now. Yep. Coming up on four to go here. And it is an 11 point Carolina lead. Van Dyke down the seam over Restrepo incomplete. And he had Gamble trailing, and now a flag has come in from the far side at the front pylon. And pass interference, I believe, on Jeremiah Gamble. Pass interference, defense. Number 44, 15-yard penalty, first down. Now, seeing that live, I, seeing it live, I did not agree with it. Let's let's take a look at the call. I mean, you, you can't really see it from that angle. I also don't think Xavier Restrepo had much shot, if any, of catching that football. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the right arm. Yeah, it's the right. He, gra he grabbed the right arm. Restrepo could have taken a dive for it. For the ball to try and catch it. Yeah, it's a passing offense. 10 for 102 for Carolina and a sack. Biggers on the blitz. You know, it's the second time on that drive that they've had that blitz and it been successful. One was one was blown dead in the end zone. This one, Giovanni Biggers. The, the really the, the best thing that he does here is he attacks the upfield shoulder of Tyler Van Dyke so he can't spin out of it. It's a great job by Biggers. Second and long now, Van Dyke gonna loop for Rambo. Cannot hang on against Grimes. Third down. Tony Grimes, one of the most talented young corners in this league. Plays it well against Charleston Rambo. Looked like he got beat initially, is sort of trailing. It's a nice job of not committing the pass interference. Ball's getting there, able to punch it out. That's going for the football. It's a really nice play by a young player. 11th play of the drive for Miami. Third and 21. You don't need all of it here. You got to go for it. Four. And the catch made Smith close to a first down at the four. Kelly the stop. And it is enough for the first down. Now first and goal, Miami. Canes are on the move here with 3.12 to go. Knight will score with 3.08 to play. Jalen Knight into the end zone for his second rushing score of the day, his third total. Now you got to follow the card, Wes. Go for two. Got to go for two. Yep. So a three-yard run by Knight. Twelve plays, 97 yards at 332. Well, it's a responsive drive by Miami, Ooh, fighting to the end. Let's see what they go with on the two-point play. 
Tight end on the right, Roddy. Yeah, it's Will Mallory. Van Dyke to his left, back inside, caught. Rambo, I believe, in traffic, held on. I tell you what, <laughs> Tyler Van Dyke makes some freshman mistakes, but then there are plays that he makes where you go, the future is bright. He shows you exactly why he was such a highly touted recruit and how he looked so great in the spring. Let's go back and look at this series. A couple of highlights from it. Tyler Van Dyke on the third and long. The strike to Keyshawn Smith gets the first down. Jalen Knighton bounces it outside, breaks the tackles, able to get in the end zone. And then how, point, how about the two-point conversion? Tyler Van Dyke rolls to his left. Cool. Sidearm. The arm angle. Patrick Mahomes like. Manny Diaz fired up knowing that his team's within three. And now you've got a decision to make. You can kick it deep and you can Maybe. give Carolina an opportunity on offense. Three timeouts. You've got three timeouts and you've held Carolina to three and out in three of the last four possessions. You're exactly right. Or you onside kick it. And you take, you try, you got two shots now. You got the shot on the onside kick. And you got the shot with the three and out to stop him. Personally, I'm a fan of the onside kick. Gives you two chances. And you got to stop him no matter what. You really have to stop him in the first three downs. Doesn't matter where that happened, whether that happens back on the 20-yard line or it happens on the 35. You have to do it no matter what. Well, eight years ago tomorrow, Miami States to come back on Carolina in Chapel Hill at night. Are the Canes doing it again today? Borgales. Carolina's got the hands group out there. Downs around the Tar Heel 15. And now Borgales has come off just to check, and he'll come running back on. So whatever the decision was made by Miami, it was just made <laughs> based on Carolina's alignment. And he's going to wedge it. And Downs makes a running <laughs> catch of it at the 27. So, Carolina gets the ball, trying to avoid eight years ago tomorrow. Tar Heels in all black on a Thursday night, Roddy. Dallas Crawford pulls Miami within three. And then the Canes get a Stephen Morris drive that ends in a Crawford touchdown. Miami comes from behind to win 27-23 after trailing by 10 in the fourth. If you can get a first down here, it certainly would make it much tougher for this Miami team. Chandler got a yard, maybe. Timeout for Manny Diaz, don't forget, still to come tonight. Off to Alumni Stadium will go. Kick at 7.30. Number 22, NC State and Boston College. Jeff Halfley and the Eagles, 4-1. and one. Tough loss at Clemson in their first conference game. Dave Doran's 4-1. and one. The loss at Starkville. They beat Clemson in overtime. Who do you like in that game, one? I think the Wolfpack is one of those teams that's on some sort of mission. Yeah. I, I kind of like Boston College. I don't know. There's just something about this Jeff Hafley team, the way that they're playing on defense, the offense. They're going to be physical in the offensive line. I, I, I think it's going to come down to the offensive line play in both of those games. Powell hands to Chandler. and Hunt stop. The clock stops with 2.57 to go. There is Josh Downs. 10 for 92 and a score in the first half. One for four in the second half, Roddy. Yeah, and they, they tried to get him, get it to him on the last third down and, and he just dropped it, but Carolina's not going to air it out right here, you would think. An incomplete pass stops the clock. So if you're Carolina, do you try and pull that Miami timeout? I, I, I honestly... I don't think that matters. The first down is the most important thing. Right. 
You've got 257 left on the clock. Miami may not even take the timeout, to be honest with you. You may save it. So being afraid of throwing the football is something that I don't think Carolina should do. So maybe I'll go back on what I just said, Carolina not airing it out. And, and I, I want to give Miami some credit, Wes, if I can. Yeah. We've gotten after them today with their tackling, and they have deserved it. But on those three and out drives, they've done a great job up front, well, and they tackled the football. But statistically, the worst tackling team in the country this year. A stop here, and it's four three and outs for Carolina in their last five possessions. Downs is in the is third from the bottom. Here's Howell. He's going to run with it, and he will get to the 30. Miami uses their last time out the DeAndre Johnson tackle. Crowd and Keenan does not like the calls. And now it is fourth and six. Very conservative on the calls. Look, Sam Howell is your best player. Your second best player is Josh Downs. And as you said, one for four in the second half. That was an opportunity. And, and I, I give Phil Longo a lot of credit for what he's done today and he tried to get downs the ball in the last third down but that's a situation where you want josh downs to get involved in some way or at least right. give, give it an option make it be a, 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 an option on that play to throw the ball to down you know the other thing though is that draw that draw to sam howell has been about the best play that they've had right for the second half one of the most consistent plays so i I can't be mad at the play calling. Now. Carolina started five of six on third down. They're two of their last nine. Here's Kiernan to punt to George. And he will hang it high, and the fair catch will be made at the 27 with 2.46 to play. Well, Miami again. Roddy, you saw it a week ago Thursday, right? A couple of weeks back. And they missed the 33 yarder at the horn to beat Virginia. They hit the field goal to beat Appalachian State earlier in the year. And Alex, they find themselves back here again. They do. And watching Tyler Van Dyke, he's just been really calm and collected, talking through plays and situations with Rhett Lashley. As Manny Diaz told me at halftime, they have that comeback fight effort in them. And now it's just about can they finish tonight? 2.46 and no timeouts for the Boosters. Easy throw, Knight, middle of the field. He got the first down to the 40. Spotted at the 41 to throw a 14. Conley the stop. So often that first, first down is the thing that gets you going. And an easy dump to the running back. Nice play by Tyler Van Dyke. Van Dyke, flushed by Bahasic, put it up for grabs and out of bounds. Boy, Raymond Bahasic. Just doesn't stop, Roddy. No, he's a, he's a man there in the middle. That's a man there, Wes. A man. Powerful, getting up field. That's why we highlighted him in, a, in the open. Doesn't get a lot of the credit. But on the other side, Tyler Van Dyke, it's a, it's a, that's a smart play by the quarterback. You cannot take a sack in these situations. With this much time left, you, you, you can survive it, but you certainly don't want it. Yep. They're going to hand the night. He busts through the first level. And he'll be tackled at the 49. The clock continues to move with 2.18 to play on Jeremiah Gimmel's tackle. Jaquarius Conley a little banged up. And Bahasic on a knee, too. Yeah. They're not blowing it dead, though. No. no. And Carolina was thinking about putting Kevin Hester out there. They called him back. Third and short here. Under two to go now. Restrepo trying to help Van Dyke out with some changes from the Miami bench. Yeah, there was a, there were a lot of signs waving over there. Something was trying to be communicated. Give is Knight first down to the Tar Heel 48-yard line. The clock stops with 1.41 to go, and Tyler Van Dyke from Glastonbury, Connecticut. Here in the second half. This Miami offensive line has done a much better job in the second half of getting some push up front, too, for these running backs. Van Dyke thought about it. Now runs, has room. He'll slide at the 35. 34 yard line of Carolina. Clock stops to move the change with 120 to go, Ronnie. This is going to come down to it. This is within 
within field goal range. It's a long kick from here, but within field goal range. We got a little bit of an injury. Miles Murphy goes down. Uh, Ray Bahasic tried to on the play before. They didn't give it to him. So you try it again with another guy. And now Manny Diaz fired up across the way at the Miami bench. And they're going to get Murphy off the field quickly. Boy, this was a... Well, Manny Diaz should be fired up. But look, we see it across the country all the time. Well, last but week's what, Iowa-Penn State? I mean, this this one's about as obvious as it gets. When Ray Bahasic is taking a knee on, on third down, then you get a couple of plays later, another guy goes down, pops right back up, walks off without any... Like, if guys are hurt, obviously go down. We see it all the time, and Manny Diaz should be fired up. Ball at the 34 for first and 10, 115 to play in Chapel Hill. I guess I should say regulation. Flushed. Stays on his feet to the near side. He'll be tackled at the 21. It's a first down for Miami. Desmond Evans comes across the field to make the play. Again, well within field goal range. And look, Manny Diaz came under some fire at the end of the Virginia game for not going for it, not being aggressive enough. While without being reckless, I think you have to give Tyler Van Dyke an opportunity to put this ball in the end zone. Van Dyke. Alludes Biggers, throws, and short of night and incomplete. 39 seconds left. Now that situation was a little bit different that, that we had against Virginia, that Miami had against Virginia. A field goal would have would have won the game there. Here, a field goal simply ties it, so Miami obviously going to be aggressive. This North Carolina defense has been able to get pressure, but you have to tackle the quarterback when you get back there. We've talked about Miami's tackling woes. North Carolina hasn't been a ton better this season. Knighton in the backfield with Van Dyke. Van Dyke slings it, caught Rambo, knocked down. Clock continues to run. 30 seconds left. You gotta throw the ball past the sticks if you're Tyler Third Van Dyke. and four, Roddy. They've got time to run a play, but you cannot get tackled inbounds. There's not enough time to get the field goal off. It's got to be an incompletion for a first down. They're going to hand it. No. Van Dyke batted in the air. And is it intercepted? It is. Cedric Gray, I think, has intercepted it. See the elation on one side, the disappointment on the other, Wes. What a play, though, by this Tar Heel defense. That's a tough catch on the interception once it's batted in the air. You got everybody around you. Cedric Gray is able to secure it, and Miami again, second game in a row. You end up in field goal territory and end up in heartbreak. But Cedric Cray was fantastic today and comes up with the game-winning interception. Tyler Van Dyke emptied the tank, Roddy. This Miami team the past couple of weeks has emptied the tank. I mean, they have played so hard and come up with nothing to show for it. Because you take, throw the ball behind the sticks, the clock keeps moving, so you've got to hurry to the line. They're trying to throw something quick, something safe. But Carolina, credit their defensive line there. Knowing that they weren't going to get to the quarterback, getting their hands up in the air. Tyler Mandek's a tall quarterback, but a little bit of a three-quarter delivery. The ball gets batted in the air. And then watch the play. Jeremiah Gimmel, the other guy who's had a fantastic game. That ball bounces over and over. It's not caught at first, but Cedric Gray comes up with the catch. Javari Ritzy had it dead to rights, Roddy. Until he didn't. 
But Cedric, <laughs> but Cedric Gray comes up with it. That's what happens when you get bodies around the football. But how about Jeremiah Kimmel? We didn't give him his credit at first, but he gets the credit for knocking that ball down. Alex, talk with Coach Brown. Coach Brown, what a finish here. What are your thoughts on this battle tonight? Well, th this team has been an inconsistent team. We've been up and down, and it's a great win for us. When you mentioned we found a way to win, what can you say just about the job your defense did? But their backs are against the wall in the way they put the... Alex Chapel, Rick Angelo, Kyle Lang, West Durham from Chapel Hill, now the huddle. By getting one first down, you exhaust all their, all their timeouts, you keep the ball, you win the game. I have never found success in playing not to lose. Play to win. Go, go score. You know what I'm saying? When you get hesitant, you start getting really conservative. That's how you lose ball games. And lucky I, it, it's, UNC to come yeah, they out got with lucky. a dub. Really Obviously, lucky. it's easy for us to say hey, as we're hey. sitting here and, and not in the shoes of those coaches on the field, but uh, certainly when you got Sam Howell, who's the, one of the best players in America, you got to trust him to let's play ball. Let's move the ball. First down. We've been moving it all game. Let's keep moving it. Put the game away. To double back, you could argue that there is an immense belief in Tyler Van Dyke, throwing for over 200 yards in that second half. The reason why they were in position there, but on the other side, old reliable, and maybe EJ, that's why you were clamoring for, do something less conservative on third down because you have Sam Howe, who made some massive plays in this one. He's actually joined by Alex Chappell post game. Let's go to Alex. Well, Sam, congratulations on this win tonight. And coming into this game, you told me this is really going to test where we are mentally. We can turn things around. It starts tonight. What did you learn about your team in this battle? Yeah, you know, I learned so much. Um, you know, it's been an up and down year, but, you know, we just tell our guy, just keep fighting. You know, we're going to give it everything we got. Um, but we left it all.